Okay, okay, I'm gonna go for it. I'm gonna slightly adjust my microphone knob so it stops drooping. And uh, say hey, everybody, before we get started. Just wanna throw a quick shout out to our patrons like I Got Comics, Qua, Jeremy Vasquez, Kylie Denton, Nestor Flores, Sotosan0424, and Video Gamer75. If you like what we do and want to see us do more, consider supporting us on Patreon. You can get access to episodes early and lots of other goodies that really help us out. Thank you for your support. Thank you. That was a powerful. That was a powerful yep. one. Holy. Yeah. Very, very jiggly, very wiggly sound waves. My Sorry. Mic. There we go. Okay. It's kind of drooping. All right, so this is What's Up. That's what this show is. And, uh... It is, uh... <laughs> it is the What's Up after No What's Up. Yeah, so, uh... Last week we didn't do a what's up because I was in the grips of sickness, and I was like, "Oh, dude, I don't have the energy." Uh, when professional sh- sleepy boy um, evolves into professional sick boy, yep, he evolves, I guess, something like that. So this is actually forty nine. Giggity. That's not how that works. But all right, we're here, and I'm still farming summer because I've been slow at that. Yeah, I am. Uh, I currently have phone in hand. I'm deciding which of these umpteen fucking um. Gotcha games I play to start working on. Yeah, today. you added some. You have some extra stuff. So you like for me, it's it's all FGO right now because there's like yeah. there's not really anything to do in AL right now. We uh we passed through the Iris event. Uh, mm-hmm. somehow I managed to not get Dunkirk, but other than that, I did okay. I got everybody. I didn't get Massachusetts. Well, that's a and shame. yeah, I know that is a shame. But I did get John Bart. So I think I got two masses before everything was done. But like I said, it was weird. I didn't get. Didn't get Dunkirk, who is purple. Uh, right now in Azure Lane, though, they are having a um, a rate up, just a solo rate up. Yeah, we're where... doing some kind of weird special subs thing. I don't care about that much either. Uh, unfortunately, as per uh, AL aesthetics, uh, too many subs are far too small for me to give any fucks about. They do have that oh. one. The is it I twenty five, who is actually a, uh, interestingly enough, her class of sub actually has like a little tiny hanger on it, which is interesting. They actually have, like, aviation abilities tied to submarines. In case you didn't know that, that there was some uh, freakish experimentation in World War II subs where they had, like, little hangers on them and stuff. Oh, yeah. Launch spy planes and shit. As I said, I'm not too, like, fussed about the subs, but um, I have made my dedication to be all Iron Blood all day, and there are two Iron Blood sh- uh, subs in this event, so I already got one of them. I got the SR one, which I was like, yeah. <laughs> the only problem is, is I've got three of the SR ones, and I haven't got I haven't got the elite one. I'm just all like, as you're late, why? Rate ups are weird. Um, there's <laughs> nothing going on in Girls Front Lane right now. Well, I mean, Cube Plus is still happening, but uh, I think it was have... it was before last week's show. I got OTS, so I'm like, fuck you, Cube. I'm out. <laughs> Smoke bomb. I haven't done anything with Cube Plus, but if I remember correctly, it lasts to like twenty something. Yes, and it's very I... long, and then they've. We're gonna have a vou- we're gonna have a boss event they've announced yeah. next, and then they have upcoming. They've said coming soon is the Valhalla collab for us. Yeah, and I'm gonna be excited for the Valhalla collab collab because that was a very fun game. Um, and I still have not played it, but I want to. Um, people have requested that I stream it, and I don't know. I'm like, mm, I kind of do, but kind of don't. I mean, hey, do no, stream, no, I stream, stream whatever. People love streams. Yeah. We. Make entire quarters on streams. <laughs> Whole quarters. <sighs> but, um, at Magic Record right now, they have an event going on. Uh, it's super cute. Much feels like, please, please, no bad things happening to these girls. Yeah, how, see, much like, is, here's the bro- is, how much is Earl Butcher involved in writing? Like, I, like, I don't know, that's the thing. Like, I've already, I already had, like, one near heart attack in this game. I'm like, Oh, God. But unfortunately, it only seems like they only got, like, three story chapters out. Ah, uh, yes, the classic mobile game thing. Yep. I need so, like, we'll how, how old is that game? How many years they got in the pocket, I wonder? Um, two years. I think it came oh, out in 2017. interesting. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. So, um, yeah, but, um, one of our, um, one of our Discord members, um, a man who likes to go by the name Dallas, um, informed me that, um, their, uh, Magicka Record does indeed have collabs. It has, uh, two, pr- uh, collabs in particular. One is the, um, uh, Lyrical Nanoha collab. Oh, shit, like, oh. damn. Now you might actually <laughs> be interested. I like that series. <laughs> and, um, the second one, which actually has, like, several one, 
is the Bakamonogatari series. <laughs> oh, oh, that's right. I remember when you found this out. Were you in yeah. VC then, or was it just a casual mention to destroy no, you? No, I was in VC. Okay. Uh, uh, VCs are some very interesting conversations. I haven't been joining in lately because of my general tiredness. Uh, as a reminder, everybody, Omega is actually an introvert, and so dealing with lots of people all at once uh, reduces my energy level. So if I'm low energy, I don't want to hang out with people <laughs> already. Like if I'm so, if I'm already down, I'm like, no, I'm gonna I'm gonna sit here and I'm gonna, I'm gonna play video games and watch videos. Yeah, so I immediately lost my shit because all the main girls from um, Bakumanagatari um, get characters, and some of them are welfare. So I was just like, ooh, ooh, I have a need. I have a mighty need. The conversation came up because um, during this event, like, they have a special raid up on one of the girls. And I was just like, I don't know if I, like, really need to save for anything. And Dallas was like, yeah, I'm, there's, like, one thing I'm saving for. And it's the Bakamon and Atari collab. And I was like, what? I was like, excuse Big me. Big pardon. <laughs> Lucky's monocle pops out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now, this actually got me thinking. I just realized something. That, like, you <clears> see these a lot with these... Not even Japanese, but with, with these Asian phone games and stuff, you know, because a, a lot of these are actually, nowadays, like, AL's, like, Chinese-made and stuff. But, yeah. like, you see a lot of these collabs, sometimes with a couple of Western properties, like, AL actually has tie-ins with uh, World of Warships, oh, which yeah. I believe is, uh, is their studio Europe-based? It's not, I don't think it's in Asia, is, is the point, though. But, like... Yeah. You see these, like, collabs with, like, anime. FGO is actually very weird in that, um, while it has done local collabs with Japanese brands for, like, convenience stores and stuff, there's a hotel, that kind of shit, mm. uh, branded escape rooms, um, the in-game collabs have so far only been with other Fate properties. Though, when you're as huge as Fate, you can afford to do that. Like, when you have that, when you're, uh, your arena is that pervasive, but still, everybody's waiting for a, for a non titan collab. Um, but... Can you think of anything that's like that in the in like the U.S. market? Because I can't like uh, like collaborations. Yeah, like where big entertainment brands who should theoretically be competing are like, no, we're not actually competing. We're gonna bring ourselves together and do something bigger. Like there was, I don't remember. Was it called Amalgam? There was a brief time when uh, Marvel and DC Comics did a weird mashup thing. They. But other than that, like, you don't really see that. I guess TV crossovers, right? Like, yeah, that used, that used like to be this. more of a thing, where you'd get, like, TVs on, like, the same network brand and stuff would, would cross over. I don't think you see that a lot anymore. Yeah, no. Like, you, like it happens more, more frequently with, like, the, in the music in industry, where artists will come together and say, hey, let's make a song together or something. That's because I think... Despite the fact that it's also super corporate and record companies are the devil and all that stuff, I think music being like a pure artist driven. I'm well. I mean, you can say what you like about uh, pop artists and cookie cutter stuff and like made by committee, but in general, musicians and and bands and stuff are are artists first. So they have that. They're just them and their artistic soul. You know, right? Like mm. the if you want to go. If you're an artist and you know Taylor Swift and you want to go do some music for Taylor Swift, all you need is for you and Taylor Swift to come hang out and do music together, I guess, right? Like, as opposed to TV, where you have to build your own production schedule and get actors together and all that other stuff. So, I don't know. But, yeah, you're right. Like, artists cooperate, they collab, but, like, TV and especially video games, like, not that I think the video game industry in the West is, like, really combative or anything in the most part. But I'm trying to think of, um, like, cause I keep thinking of collabs, I'm like, wait, no, that's, like, a Japanese game. No, because, like, I thought Super Smash, wait, no, that's Nintendo. <laughs> yeah. That's Nintendo, and they've only collabed with, um, I think, Japanese properties. Uh, wait, no, they got, they got Banjo in there now, aren't they? Didn't they announce that? Yeah, I think so, yeah. Okay, so that's, that is, but that's still a Japanese company reaching out to a Western company to do the collab. Yeah, but I would say that that's a little weird because Banjo Kazooie is like, I'd say I think it's um, um, that's um a rare property, and if yeah. I remember right, Rare was all on like Nintendo and stuff until mm -hmm. like it went defunct and um, I got bought it by Microsoft rare right now. Yeah, but yeah, so that's they have a previous business relationship. Yeah, but still, like I don't, 
I don't I can't think of big entertainment properties that come together like this so like other than properties which are inherently like Marvel stuff of course those are multiple brand names and lines but that's not the same that's all you that's like when Tight Moon does collabs with itself in FGO that's not like that's I don't think that's a huge business achievement when the guy who wrote Kara no Kyokai gets Kara no Kyokai in oh. the mobile game. Oh, wait, no, no, no. No, we do get fucking mashups. We get weird-ass. Remember those weird-ass fighting games? Like, Marvel vs. Capcom? And, like, um... What well, was the true, Mortal Kombat? I guess, but... Um, uh, what was it, like, DC vs. Mortal Kombat? That's true. DC vs. Mortal Kombat is a 100% Western thing, because I'm pretty sure Marvel vs. Ca- you know, Capcom is a Japanese company. Oh, yeah, still, but... But, yeah, no, like, that's right, um... And I guess, actually, now that you mention it, that. Mortal Kombat, period, because um, they get shit like Predator and, and uh, Jason yeah. and shit in there, too, right? And, like, Freddy yeah. Krueger. Mm-hmm. Um, so I guess it's the horror slash gore genre, because um, I know the game, I don't know if you've ever played it, I uh, got it free for PlayStation, I played it a little bit, Dead by Daylight, the asymmetric multiplayer, like, uh, oh, slasher it. movie game, uh, yeah. that has lots of crossovers with horror, they had, like, uh, a a um Michael Myers and a Freddy Krueger kind of download a Leatherface. They got the pack. scream. They got the scream villain recently, if I remember yeah. correctly. So like they've managed to bring together a lot of horror properties. That's really interesting. Is that is that because the slasher genre started that by making dumb mashup movies that people accept this? So we, it's very interesting. I I'm I'm very curious what people think about this out there in the world. If you can think of any other Western based collabs, let me know. Like I'm trying to think. Because, yeah, not uh, a lot of stuff jumped to mind. So that, that first ten minutes was brought uh, brought to you by Omega's, not shower, but, uh, you know, in the middle of the show thoughts. Actually, I'm pretty sure, like, back in the 90s, there were some fucking crossovers between Toy Brand. I like, can see that. I, I can't think, like, I want to say, like, Street Sharks and something else, but I can't remember it is what off the top of my fucking head. I can see that. I'm trying to think. Like, I bet, I bet there are a couple, there have been a couple of... Like, that's basically what I mentioned before with, like, TV. You used to get TV collabs. Like, cartoons would cross over sometimes. That was a thing that, like, Cartoon Network would do and be like, ooh, here's a big episode where the such-and-such cartoon and the other thing cartoon will come together. You're like, okay, neato. I'll watch that hour-long special that you'll never reference again. Good job, cross-promotion. Oh, I remember. It was Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles featuring the Street Sharks. That sounds about right. Yeah. Uh, That was... But yeah, so I'm I'm sure we've given some people lots of nostalgia talking about this. Problem. Excuse you. But so, um, we yeah, should have so, talked about gotcha, but I think we hit most of it. I think so. Um, as I, I should really, really knuckle down and do girls frontline because I need to get to, I need to throw down for um G forty one's skin mm. with tokens that is in the event. I'm not gonna buy anything, but I'm gonna try with what I got. Apparently, in the voucher event, you can get Amelie's, and I was all like, "I am very interested in this skin for reasons." Do I have Amelie? I don't. I do not have Amelie, but I I will one day have Amelie. Well, yeah, that's fair. The skin, like I also there was that one. In the the animation is cute because she throws the volleyball and then hits herself with it. They Amelie is cute. She's also an open. Ghost Frontline has re- yeah. like we said before. Ghost Frontline has really good aesthetics. And I don't want to say the gameplay is terrible, but goddamn, it hurts me a lot sometimes. My soul. Uh, though, if considering our our history with voice, if the U.S. Girls Frontline people are listening, we we don't blame you. We know that's that's the the original Chinese developers' decision to make us want to die. Because uh, <laughs> oh my god, Cube. Oh, the God bless the. I think it was a Korean user who came up with the the Boss Finder app. Um, yeah, worked every time. Worked every time, but otherwise, fuck me, dude. Like, goddamn. Th- this hide-and-seek-in-the-dark bullshit. No. No siree. That is not good. q 6 of robots, why are you drawing lifeguard properly? Uh, I believe one of our community uh, members said it best. I wonder if I can find the exact comment. Probably not, because <laughs> I think it was an art dump. Which means it's been buried by, like, a million arts. Um... But basically, they said something to the effect of that uh, that cute, sexy robots is uh, just uh, the big horny energy, because mm-hmm. it's true. And it some true. sometimes they they post stuff I can't retweet, and other times they do. That's a uh, lucky has taken the. What is this? 
I'm sorry, there's just something weird going on here, and I gotta find out what is going on here. Sure, go for it. All right, I'm gonna so retweet I'm gonna post, that post, post, post. <laughs> By the way, so um, to, as a follow-up to FGO, in case any, I did, didn't mention that on the show, which I don't think I did, uh, I've been... Whenever an assassin is required for the summer event, I have bringing, been bringing along my Carmilla as a spiritual summer. That's why I have Mordred and um, Tomcat in my respective uh, Saber and, um, and um, Berserker. Okay, but yeah, so I'm on Twitter, and basically, like, it's like a, it's an, it's a, it's an area set up, that, you know, has covers and everything, and it has a bunch of cutouts of, um, of, uh, Monaco from, um, Do You Like Your Mother and her two multi-hit attacks, and it's just a bunch of dudes laying down, like, looking at a tablet screen with this cardboard cutout behind them, I'm like, Japan, what is going on, and I want to be involved in this. Is this some kind of, like, elaborate, uh, selfie stand? Uh, though also it appears that, um, if I'm looking at this right, there's a cutout where her lap goes with a pillow. Yeah. So you can take a nap there, and they're just watching tablets. Oh, that reminds me, Lucky, you overslept. Have you, uh, uh, watched your Squishy Mom anime yet? Uh, yeah, it actually came out yesterday. Okay, it came out yesterday. All right, so you can, you can talk about that if you feel like it. Oh, no, I'm just like... I'm laughing about this third fucking image, which just looks like a whole bunch of fucking people just standing around, like, in awe that this is happening. Yeah. I'm like, <laughs> um, I'm not gonna lie, um, Lucky would be there. They're just like, what the fuck am I watching? I think they're watching most of them are, that. most of them are Western. Where is this? Let me translate this tweet. Does this say where it is? So this is, is this Ak- is in Akibahara, I think. Akiba yesterday. Yeah. So th- those are probably tourists who are like, is this what I came to Japan for? Um, the, the, wait, no, there, the, the perfect like, caption for this third image is varying degrees of want. Because <laughs> uh, there's a wide collection of facial facial expressions there. Uh, it said, um, if Lucky was there in that third image, he would be the um, blur that is sprinting towards it. Just edit in a blur. <laughs> That's me. It me. Is that ten? So, actually, let me turn on my PS4 here real quick, because, um, because, uh, all I have is a PS4 TV, that's basically what I gotta do everything on, and I'm okay with that, thank you for being a multimedia entertainment device, PS4, holy shit. Yeah, PS4's but, good. But, by the way, here's something crazy that I just learned yesterday. So Okay, um... So, you know what we were talking about, like, um, Crunchyroll and what they're fucking doing with their money and shit? Yeah. Apparently they're co-financing fucking anime. So, actually, let me see if I can find, like, this. So they, they've they branched out from just paying, uh, exorbitant uh, fees for exclusive anime, which get episodes to just upfront, like, yo. Yeah, hang on, let me hang on. I can find the fucking... Well, I suppose if Netflix started to do that, Crunchyroll would have to, would have to jump up to start, too. Yeah, because that is a thing. Like, while we've we've joshed Netflix before for Netflix original, because some of the shows are just they're Netflix original in the sense that much like some British TV shows, Netflix has exclusive rights in this market. But yeah. in other cases, like with um, be for be the beginning, for instance, they were actually partially funded by Netflix for Netflix to to pick up in in multiple areas. Okay, here it is. Which reminds me, I believe okay, they're working is. on a second season of that, and I'm very interested because of reasons. Well, we'll I'll talk more about that in a second, I think, because we're talking about Alright, so, anime. like, their list ain't, like, super, like, like, huge for, um, the, um, Kona fans, but, like, anime is, like, How to Keep a Mummy, Citrus, Katana Maiden, uh, Miss Koizumi loves, a uh, Laidback Camp. This is the one that shook me, because I fucking love Laidback Camp, and they've already have, they have a, they have, a uh, three new animation projects in the works for it. They have, um, a second season, a short, um, a short season and a movie, um, because I also recently learned that the anime covers up to only volume four of the manga, and there's eight volumes to the manga. And I was all like, "Excuse me, where can I find this?" And you know, so I started like, you know, um, Hacker Man, like rapidly typing on the keyboard, like multiple tabs. Tabs are going everywhere as I'm looking for these other. Ah, uh, yes, the great push of like, <laughs> wait, shit, I found a new series, but this isn't all of it. Yeah. And so, and, you know, so I'm going through things, and just one of those things of, oh, yes, uh, Laidback Camp was uh, co-financed by Crunchyroll. I was like, excuse me. Pardon? Wait, what? So, basically, you know, some digging later, and I found out, yeah, they've, uh, let's see here. 
Oh, let's see, Lay Back Cam featuring Neko, the Junji Ito collection, A Place Further Than the Universe. Uh, this recovery was an anime of you a... really liked. Yeah, it was one I really liked. That recovery. Did you watch Recovery of an MMO Junkie? Yes, I did. Love that show. Yeah, that was that was co-founded by Crunchyroll. Nice. Co- All right. Co-finance. But... I would, so like... now I'm now I'm wondering though what what are we calling co-financing? Is this just that they bought the rights before it, it was finished? So that means that they were paying a decent chunk of the 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 licensing fees basically per episode. Which, uh, as has been discussed, I think we actually talked about this on our show. The actual research that like the the fee pay to licensed exclusively to the U.S. market that Crunchyroll pays in is actually, if not the budget of an anime episode, a decent chunk of the budget. So, for some of these uh, shows that, like, Crunchyroll securing the rights actually, like, pays in a significant amount to get the show going and stay going. Um, so I'm, I'm wondering how those agreements are phrased, like, to c- see what qualifies as uh, co-finance. But yeah, that's that's pretty good. That's good on Crunchyroll to... Yeah, they're spending their money on good stuff at least. Yeah, as I said, like, um, like I haven't watched all these shows, but like a lot of them, I really like. I really like, like, uh, let's see here, the ones I liked, the How to Keep a Mummy was good, Citrus I guess, was weird, Layback Camp was amazing, A Place Further Than the Universe was amazing, Recovery of an MMO. I junkie. really need to Kino's, find a different Kino's support was good. than this one guy who's got a level one hundred Musashi on my list. Uh, uh, restaurant to another world, a centaur's life, kim- like kimono friends. Mm, yeah, a lot of those are good. So a like- lot, a lot of those are very, very kitschy, very popular. Though, yeah. um, somebody is, I'm sure, gonna be like, "Her, dur, that means Crunchyroll paid a weird far right guy." Uh, because in case you guys didn't hear, the uh, was it the animation director, one of the big staff members on the uh, MMO Junkie anime, uh, revealed himself on Twitter to be basically the Japanese version of ultra right wing conservative. Um, huh. and got in a lot of trouble, but he's only one cog in the wheel, so it's okay to still watch that show. <laughs> I'm pretty sure if you watch the show now, he's been fired, so. Yeah. That's all. That's, that's always the thing I know people, um, are concerned about. While I was sick, I watched some TV. I don't want to, well, I'll come back to anime if I talk about it, but uh, one of the things I watched, because I just saw it splash across, was, um, uh, shoot, I can't into names, uh, it's not that guy, because he's... I know he's been popular because he's got a movie coming out together. Is it? I need to double-check. Is this the guy I'm thinking of? Yes, it was... Uh, I watched on Netflix Aziz Ansari's new um, comedy special, which is pretty good. Uh, he's been out of the, the media lately because he was in kind of a, a Me Too-type scandal. Um, and it uh. you can tell it kind of changed his outlook on life, where like he was like, wow, that was really... That was really harrowing for him to kind of be in the center of this thing, but he talks about it a little in the special, but mostly he just drops some comedy on there. But, like, he compares, um, like, he actually does a bit with the audience where he's like, oh, so after a, a, a Netflix documentary, how many of you guys are done with R. Kelly? And there's a lot of people. And then he's like, okay, but how many of you are done with Michael Jackson? There's a lot less people. Mm-hmm. And But I think part of that is because Michael Jackson is... Well, one, his music is incredibly iconic, but also he's dead. So, like, he doesn't get any of that money anymore or anything. Mm-hmm. Like, he he can't get anything. Uh, and, and another news after that special came out, uh, not to get too much into current events, but uh, R. Kelly was arrested on some federal charges and stuff. So that's cool. Oh boy, glad that's happening. Yeah, speaking of things that like actually like um, because again, this is me like when I was. In deep in the um, anime news search engine, I did not know that Vic Mignogna was involved is being alleged for like sexual um like um harassment or that's very interesting that you had maybe it's because that story kind of I I remember when it first kind of came out and there were a lot of there were a lot of people distancing him like um yeah. Funimation Rooster Teeth lots of people who worked with him kind of kind of step stepped back but then I think it died down for a while so it's interesting that I think it's come back a little yeah I think it's I think it's coming back a little, like, I don't know. But it's just like, God, it's like, jeez. We it's we live rough. in an interesting time. And actually, that's one of the things that I really liked about uh, Aziz Ansari's comedy special. He he talks a lot about and he makes a lot of jokes about just how reactionary and and not not really momentary our culture is right now in 2019. He talks a lot about, like, you can't look at old shit with 2019 eyes. Like... You know, uh, he talked about The Office, like, everybody thinks, oh, Pam and Jim, that was really cute. No, that would be, if you did that in 2019, that would be, you know, she'd win a class action lawsuit. Mm-hmm. Like, he makes those kind of kind of uh, jokes and stuff. And he talks about, the R. Kelly thing actually came out because he talked about how apparently in a really old comedy special, he talked about 
how much he liked R. Kelly's music, which he's like, ooh, that didn't age well. Like, <laughs> that's that's just kind of the way our society is. Since the, the digital revolution, like, there's so much shit you've said and you've thought and you've experienced that's, like, written down somewhere. But, l- Lucky, I, I, I wonder if you agree with me on this. I, I don't think you can... You can hold the you of ten years ago against yourself, like no. that's not that's like, not fair. I mean, I, I you agree. were comp- you were a very like, I was a, especially for me because I'm 26 now, so I would have been 16 then. But me yeah. ten years ago was a completely different person who like, didn't uh, know things and hadn't experienced some things yet. Like everyone's experiences with things are relative are relative to the times and how they experienced them, and so that's why like like God like. Like, the person I am today was not, is not, I am, is not the person I was yesterday. Just from, like, from things you learn, like, just from the things you learn, from the things you experience, like, every day you are a little bit different. And over time, that makes, turns into a big fucking change. Mm -hmm. Um, God, like, like, for, like, um, like, for example, um, all right, so, um, hashtag humblebrag here, but, like sometime in like the past two weeks, I can't remember exactly when. Um, um, there were some guys bemoaning their lacks of, of of dating ability in the uh Discord, and I just got in and was like, "Boom! Um, do you guys know what you need? What you need to know? What you need to get the ladies? Let me hear. Let me lay down some fucking facts." And like, and I can say those things is because you know I'm over thirty. I've gone around and dated a bunch, and you know I've piled up those experiences. If you had asked me this question, like, like, ten years ago, I'd been like, I don't know, man, I'm gonna be forever fucking alone, man, don't ask me. It's like, it's like, along these things, it's like, uh, my opinions change too, fuck, like, let's see here. I'm trying to think of, like, an opinion that I held, held, um, like, ten years ago that well, it's I hard. don't... Well, it's hard, for both of us, I think it's hard, because we're bad at time and memory. Yeah, we are bad at time. What was, uh... what even, that was 2009 was ten years ago, what even was that year? What happened then? I don't fucking know. I'm gonna Google 2009 right now and see if, see what Wikipedia says it was important that year. What does Wikipedia think is important? Uh, that was the year Barack Obama was sworn in as president. Uh, Kepler mission started. There's a lot. There's a lot of stuff I don't. I don't care about because it's not relevant anymore. Why are plane crashes noted on Wikipedia in years? Was that the year? I think that was. That was the year Avatar premiered. Was the highest grossing film of all time for a while. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, 2009 was like forever ago to me. All right. We uh, we took a quick break there for a second, but we're back. We were talking about how, A, we have no idea what happened 10 years ago. Yeah. But also, like, I was B, actually thinking they... about this. Well, go ahead, then, if you um, thought about some stuff. Like, I think the only thing that I can say that has, like, has um like remained intact from like ten years ago is my taste in like video games and um and um anime like that's it like my taste in music has changed and like actual TV has changed and like the friends I want to keep the people like the women the types of women I like like my gen- my overall like political opinions sexual orientation. Like, so much about me has, like, changed in just, like, these past ten years. I'm just, like, if I looked at myself, like, honestly, like, if I had to have a conversation with, like, myself ten years ago, I'd probably punch them. I think everybody feels like that. Like, yeah. I'd, I'd talk to that guy and I'd be like, hey, dude, here's what your future is going to be like, so this is what you should actually work on. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and uh, don't half-ass college otherwise you might have so you might have more money with your life to do things that you actually care about <laughs> but alas yeah. Uh, but yeah so basically the thing I kind of want to get at there also that I thought about was that like holding five years ago ten years ago whatever against people like okay this isn't necessarily count like if you did a crime like if you did something that's illegal is a wrong right and you weren't and you didn't suffer for it at the time that's perfectly okay. Like, that's, that's like, oh, so you did something wrong and nothing, no punishment reflected back on you. That's different than just, you were just an idiot asshole ten years ago, right? That's not illegal. Yeah. Um, w- our prisons would be even more full, over full than they are right now if being an idiot asshole was illegal. We also probably wouldn't have a government to run those prisons, and <laughs> we wouldn't have a news media to report on those prisons, and we wouldn't have, 
angry people on the internet to yell about people in those prisons. Like, there'd be... Basically, there'd be a lot of people that would be in angry idiot prison. <laughs> and uh, it would it would probably cause the breakdown of our society. Or, would it, or maybe it would be really great. I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> that's an entirely different discussion. But, like, I think that why that's wrong is that denies the person the benefit of their experience, right? That's the thing yeah. about humans. That's the thing about institutional memory. Humans are always growing and learning. You know, they say you learn something new every day. Now, if a person shares the same uh, idiot asshole opinion from 10 years ago as from one year ago or from yesterday, okay, that guy's being an idiot asshole still, right? That means his yeah. behavior hasn't changed. But that's still in this moment, right? And, like, you can point, if a person is being an idiot or an asshole, and you can point at their past behavior to be like, hey, uh, son, you have a trend of being an idiot asshole, possibly on the internet. Like, okay, that's a thing, right? You've built you've built a theme. But at the same time, there's so many things where it's just like, oh man, there's just so much shit you can't hold against people because it doesn't it doesn't let people grow, right? Like it doesn't let people be what you call it. Uh, like it, but like I said, it denies them the benefit of their learning experience. I have learned so much shit. Like I said, in 10 years, in five years, in a year. Uh, well, more likely in the two years we've been doing this ish. Because just, goddamn, like, there's so many little things from just how you talk to people, how you want to talk to people. You learn from good experiences. You learn from a lot from bad experiences. Oh, yeah. Uh, you know, you learn from the harsh criticisms. You learn from rough and tumble shit and from fuck ups. And just like, and to hold something, uh, also, it's important that you don't hold when people fuck up or are bad and dumb against them forever, right? Like, you have to yeah. also, not only do you have to give them the benefit of their experience, you also have to give them the ability to learn from things, right? Because if, it, once again, if everybody would were condemned as a useless human being after every mistake, there would be literally none of us. We would all be dead. Like, oh, yeah. that's, that's how, that's, you know, that's what survival of the fittest is, right? That's what the, what we understand to be the underlying principle of biology is that, hey, guess what? Uh, if there was a time where things only survive and evolve by not fucking up. Also, what let's see. Is there is there sound in this? Can I play this video? Which one? The one you just posted about the, the book cover. Can I... Is uh, there audio? Uh, I didn't hear any. I played it with... Uh... Okay. Uh, that's really rad. That's cool. I like that a lot. <laughs> this is with an AR overlay? Yeah. Okay. There is audio, but I muted it. Or it was auto muted, but yeah, okay, that's real fucking neat. Did you retweet this? I think yeah, I think uh, my my uh, Twitter is just uh, usually set to auto mute or whatever. Possibly. All right, so you did retweet it. I'll retweet it also. So look at our Twitters <laughs> if you want to see that book cover we're talking about, and also lots of other shit. Because boy howdy, I'm pretty uh, sure I'm ninety uh, percent of what retweets? I retweet. <laughs> um, I'm telling you all right now, uh, like seventy percent of what I tweet and or retweet is anime titty. Well, booty. Just let me know. Okay, so let's hold on. Let me, let me see. I'm looking at my my profile. Uh, yep, that's a lot of that's a lot of retweets. You probably have to gonna have to yeah. You have to scroll back all the way to about six hours ago from now when technically I tweeted on the studio account uh, <laughs> that we released a video and then I retweeted it on my personal account, so it's not even an original tweet. But yeah, like I. That's honestly why I follow Twitter so much was just because it gave me such a great place to follow. Or to see lots of art and uh, lots of news updates and stuff. And occasionally post cat pictures. Because who doesn't love cat pictures? And Lucky retweeted a thing that I cannot retweet. But I can post in <laughs> Hell and for Work. Uh, so that, was, people, just, that uh... was just my thought about like... Like, it was funny. Because um, like I said, uh, and Zizan Sorry like, talks about... Like reactionary, like he he says a thing that I found was very funny, where he's like, "Man, uh, keeping in mind that he's Indian, he's like, man, you know, say, you know, say this about racists. At least they're they're one and done. But uh, newly woke white people are exhausting. I'm like, yeah, I've 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 seen some some wokened people who are just nonstop. And it's like that's that's really funny that you picked up on that too. All right. But like, that's another thing. that's like it's it's a very interesting commentary about how how breakneck we are in this day and age, right? Well, you, like a lot, like most of the times, like the like the time that I see it the fucking most is in politics, like like especially when you're in election campaigns. 
like those people will bring up things that they said like 15, mm-hmm. 20 years ago, and I'm just all like, "Can you trust this, this guy?" Re- it's like, it's like, how is this relevant in like the past year? Yeah, I guess the question is, yeah, can you pin something in anybody lately? Yeah, <laughs> like is the problem like I, as much as nobody likes a shifty politician, like if if they were responsible for some shenanigans like 15 or 20 years ago, which I will say is a bad thing about our politicians that they have careers that like. 15 or 20 years ago probably wasn't even the peak of their career. Yeah. But that's that's an entirely different discussion about shit like term limits and things. And, like, mm-hmm. eventually... Listen, everybody, eventually all the politicians you don't like, they're already really old. They're all gonna die, and you're gonna get new politicians. It'll just happen. Um, But, yes, like, that's, that's a, a really weird thought. But also, goddamn, just... What, ha- what has happened now... What are people doing now? And can you link past behavior to now? Like, did they not learn from this experience? Or did they mm-hmm. learn the wrong thing? Because that can happen with, with bad behavior, too, is you can... Yeah. Like, if you do something bad and get away with it, you can learn that it's okay, and it's not really okay. Yep. Or it shouldn't be, but whatever. That's, you know, how people are sometimes. Uh, but all right, now we're at, we're at about the 30-minute mark. We're at the 40-minute mark. Um, talking about Netflix, there's another thing that I finally got around to in my uh, fever delirium watching. Uh, I caught up on Stranger Things Season 3. Uh, mm-hmm. Lucky, I, I don't believe you're up to date on the Stranger Things. Uh, again, it's one of those things I want to watch, but I just have I this know. this weird... I just have this really weird aversion to just watch like actual live-action anything. Like well, I don't know what if it you is. Ever, if really, you ever get the time, or if we have to like sit down and watch it, like see, here's the thing. Like the future, again, like, like oh, like like uh, that's why I, I think I mentioned this before. If I'm with somebody, I can watch about anything. But if I'm by myself, I'm like, mm, let me go watch something 3D or anime or animated. Because uh, because uh, I do. Well, again, we'll see. You'll see why I like stuff later. Because I'm gonna circle it back around to anime. Because there's another thing that happened. Um, but uh, I liked it. I like Stranger Things. It's got that. I'm not. Actually, an 80s kid. Hi, uh, 1992 here. In case you couldn't tell from what I mentioned how old I was earlier. But um, I still get pop cultural references. And also just thematically, it's the sort of show that I like. It's about, you know, uh, young kids, you know, early to mid-teens dealing with supernatural shit uh, in their own environment. And, And it does a good job of, like, the kids aren't magically good at everything all the time. They lean very heavily on the one kid who has psychic powers. Who could guess? Um, and, but also, adults aren't completely useless. Like, like the one of the main kids, uh, his dad is completely useless. He's an 80s sitcom dad in a uh, freaky horror TV show. You know, spooky urban fantasy type thing. Like, um, basically, I believe uh, Stephen King has called it, uh, you know, he called it a best of Stephen King type show. It basically takes all his best <laughs> themes and ideas and puts them in, in one one narrative. Um, but yeah, so it, like his dad is completely useless, but other people who are adults are not useless, and so they're some of my favorite characters. So it's 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 really good at blending like the high school or college age kids with the the you know the middle school kids and the adults all doing things all doing different times. But the only thing I want to say about season three is well, I. I generally like the pacing and I like some of the themes and concepts. I do feel like it was a little short. It was only eight episodes um, as opposed to they're usually about 10 or 11. And it was one of those cases where I kind of felt the lost episodes. I was like, oh, shoot, dude, you could have you could have squeezed another episode or two out there. And like you could have slowed the pacing and the ramp up down to actually talk about some shit. But it worked out OK. And um, I'm there was a stinger. So I'm very interested in what's going on in uh, season four, which I'm sure they will announce because. I'm sure Netflix makes all kind of money off that stuff. There uh, there was a tie-in with New Coke, um, because the TV show is now set in the period when New Coke happened, and apparently Coca-Cola released the the so-called Coke 2 formula again as a Stranger Things tie-in. So huh. like they're they're pulling a lot of a lot of a lot of product placement dollars and a lot of eyeball dollars, which is kind of cool, but still, it's neato. Um, I think it's like, wasn't it for a limited time? Like, like this ain't the first time because I remember um when um because this was a big thing when that Rick and Morty episode came out where they went through the McDonald's drive-in and they had to go to that specific one because it was the only one that had the fucking Szechuan sauce. Yeah, McDonald's like they actually came together. It's like how the fuck did we make this shit again? 
Uh, yeah, there and was then, that was a different the, that was on their own volition type stuff. But yes, that yeah. was that was a thing where like, oh shit, this is a big media experience. People are interested in that fucking Szechuan sauce. We'll bring it back in not enough amounts in a limited time. Yep. Uh, me personally, when I go to McDonald's, I'm not about sauce, but that's just me. That's also like I don't I don't do extra sauce with wings. The 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 spicy sauce is enough for me. But that's just my style. Now. If you want to go down to Domino's, you want to order some cinnamon nuts. You got to sprinkle that icing on there. Otherwise, they're not the same. But that's a different conversation. <laughs> uh, so I watched, yeah, I watched Stranger Things three, and I like it a lot. Um, so, Mister Oversleep, I guess that means that uh, first of all, you, if you you watched the episode, you didn't talk about Akasan online yet. So I'm, I know you've you've been kind of interested in this for a while. So I do want to hear your thoughts. But really quick, before we jump off into that, I want to finish up my thoughts earlier by, uh, uh, did you watch Case Files two yet? Uh, no, it is literally, like, because, um, Case Files, uh, comes out on Saturday. Yeah. Like, Saturday morning. Like, specifically around, um, 10 a.m., um, Pacific Standard Time. So, I was dead. I was dead to the world. Yeah, so, I, that's, that's another thing I was wondering. Um, I have, so, I won't spoil anything from it, because it's, uh, part of the reason why I'm so hype is because it is, well, I've talked about this before, I really love detective fiction. I really love mysteries. Um. The show is just that. Like, the second episode, at least, is just, uh, fucking Waver solves crimes. That's, that's the entirety. I love it so much. Um, they literally drop the, the terms in English, but they drop, um, how done it and why done it. You know, talking about classic mystery concepts, stuff like mm-hmm. that. Um, they use magic and the, the idea of the bounded field to make a closed room mystery, basically. Like, who could have done it? There was a bounded field. There's only four suspects. Um, there's literally a scene where they trot out all the suspects r- rapidly in order. And you're like, oh, shit, they got the maid in there. They got the kid. They got the the, the weird nephew. They got the, f- the old friend whose eyes are always shut, so he's suspicious as fuck. I was like, <laughs> at first I was like, oh, fuck, is this guy the butler? If he's the butler, he did it. Um, <laughs> he wasn't the butler. And I won't discuss who did it yet, because Lucky hasn't seen it yet. And I don't want to I don't want to spoil anything for anybody who hasn't, but... Just goddamn, I, I've talked about this before. I love urban fantasy. I love detective stuff. So that's why one of the reasons why I like the Dresden Files so much. So I love Case Files. Um, somebody, for the love of God, license these novels and sell them to me directly into my body. Just uh, <laughs> put them in weird, whatever the weird digital drip form for the Sheikah Slate is, and just drip that into my eyes. And we'll come back to that reference I made just there in a second. Um, but yeah, it's super good. Also, love the music. Oh my God. Um... Fate has really good music in general, and I feel like new works add to it a lot. Like, um, Karno Kyoka had a very good soundtrack. Uh, Zero had some really good, interesting stuff. Like, um, because, um, those weren't works that were, like, actually had orchestration. Like, a lot of classic Fate music is because Fate Stay Night was, you know, a visual novel that had background music first, too. A lot of your classic themes, you know, Emia, stuff like that sort of promised victory, you know. There are a lot of classic motifs you hear again, but uh, first off, the OP, there's no vocals. Um, It's not like a J-pop song or anything. It's just the main theme of the series in a really cool orchestration with really great imagery, and it's super rad, and I love it. Um, But they use those main themes and those light motifs a lot, Uh, and there's an action sequence later, and it's really cool, but I can't talk about it yet because Lucky hasn't seen it, and I need him to, to get this fresh. (laughs) <laughs> uh, maybe we'll talk about it next week but yeah so uh, I love Case Files a lot it's really good I need more of that shit uh, next week I'll make sure to watch it before. sure so uh, you actually watched the first episode of Okasan Online why don't you talk yeah. about it for the audience how do you feel about it so far I feel pretty good like see here's something like here's something I have to clarify with the with the audience the reason why I am so fucking on board um, Okasa Online is not for the story, it's for the artist. The main, the, for the light novel, the main illustrator, um, for it is Pochi, who I absolutely adore and love and please marry me one day. She's actually really crazy. She's, um, she likes to sing, she's a VTuber, and she draws fucking Lou things. It's like, this, this woman is amazing. Also, her virtual, I, uh, avatar is adorable. Yeah. She likes, um, she likes Eldritch Horrors, and she likes turning them into cute waifus. Um, but, 
Which really so, says a lot about the <laughs> fundamental disconnect between <laughs> Japanese people and H.P. <laughs> Lovecraft. <laughs> but anyway, continue. So, basically, that was the main reason why I wanted to watch Okasan Online. Actually, it's interesting. On Crunchyroll, they actually have it as the full fucking title. Which I was um, checking at because it's a long fucking title. You can't even fit it on the screen. Um, uh, Do You Love Your Mom in her two-hit multi-target attack. And, like, the thing that, like, as I said, like, the thing that's always um, annoyed me the most about, like, talking about this title is everyone's like, oh my god, it's fucking incest. I'm all like, well, I guess that's the problem of the, of the <gasps> Japanese and they're um, willing to do the weird shit. But no, it's not. And I remember I got real it's irritated. It's not actually point. about mommy issues. It's only a little bit about mommy issues. It's a little bit about mommy issues. It's more about, you know, trying to, you know, connect with your mother in a non-sexual way. Because the main character is a person who does love his mom. But the problem is that his mom is ridiculously um, youthful looking and beautiful. And so he just feels increasingly awkward around her. And, like, the point of the series is him, like, trying to, you know, overcome that. So, you know... Because um, the mother is, you know, super, what's the word I want to love? say, affection. She loves her son and wants the best for him. And so, you know, like, and like, honestly, like, I, a lot of people go through this. And, you know, that, that just that teenage rebellion age of, like, you can't tell me what to do, mom. I know what's best. It's like, this is just what that just taking up to anime levels of, let's put you in a fucking video game and let's make the, the mom really fucking beautiful. So it's not an incest story, it's, you know, it's, uh, you know, trying to come to peace with your mom and all that stuff, and be able to say, I love you, mom, in a non-sexual fashion. God, I wish I really not clarifying that. But, like, the first, ep- uh, the first episode, like, oh my god, like, so, <laughs> I found out that the, um, the voice actress for, uh, Mamako is, um, Kayano Ai, and her voice is absolutely adorable, I'm like, Oh God! So hold on. Before you go any further, I need I need you to clarify: Is it Mamako or Mamiko? Because I haven't watched this yet. Uh, How's that spelled? Because now I'm mean, vi- if it's if it's literally Mama Child, I'm gonna laugh a lot. Because uh, in case you guys didn't know, the the co suffix uh, yeah. is a Japanese word that means child. It's usually a feminine uh, yeah. signifier in names. It's Mamako. <laughs> So basically, you can also read it as basically young mama. Exactly. That's hilarious. God, the Japanese love their wordplay so much, and I'm glad that I there are points when I can actually catch it. Mm-hmm. Like, um, here's the thing. Um, I I was watching Case Files, and there was actually uh, I I I did a thing where Lucky does sometimes. I caught a um a technically not a direct translation in the subs where um in the subtitles it says that Waver says I'm not a superhero. Uh, but the actual Japanese dialogue, the phrase he uses is, uh, Segi no Mitama. He uses Hero of Justice. I'm like, ha! I know why they did that, because it's a callback. It's a reference. Yeah. It's completely lost yep. in the translated script. Thanks. Yep. But I understand things now, so I look for phrases. Mm-hmm. But, so, um... There's cuteness like, in this anime. Is, uh, at least in the first episode, is there also a lot of action animation? Because uh, I know that that's I'm part of the, not... the gimmick, is that, like, uh, is it... Because I have I... I queued it up, but I did not watch it yet, because uh, I haven't had time. Because I'm like, I want to see what this is about. Lucky likes this thing, and like the art designs are really good, so I'll yeah, watch some a, shit. Like, but um, that's part a, they're of completely the imitating um, Pochi's um, style, which makes me happy. But like honestly, like I would say, like the action definitely takes. There's not a lot of action. Um, I think like there is only like one action scene per se, and that's when uh, Mamako basically swings her sword. And you can see the, see their effect, and it was all right. I do know that later in the series there are more fights. I just don't know how like how much of the budget is going to go into them. All right, because I I know that part of the conceit is that like part of the conflict is that she's super overpowered, hence the name. Yep. Which, by the way, we actually broke down that the literal the literal Japanese title uses like the word for attack like literally three times. Yeah. So it's it's. Not only is it like so, it's the translated is like, do you do you like your mom and and her two hit multi target attacks? It's literally like, and her, uh, multi hit a- attacks, which are also area attacks, etc. It was like yeah. really funny to see that written out. I'm like, linguistics is fun, kids. 
<laughs> I'm staring at my phone right now. I need literally one AP to do this quest, but it's f- four minutes away. I'm like, mm, <laughs> mm. I'm going to wait the four minutes. I'm not going to spend an apple. I, like, I'm going to tell everyone, give it the three episode treatment. Like, I'm going to watch it just on fucking principle, and I'm probably going to buy the Blu-rays when it comes out. Just on fucking well, yeah, because you like the art, like, like the Blu-rays not- is especially a good pr- a purchase if you like the art style of something. Yeah. Get all that refined images. Um, as I said, like, uh, join my Discord to hear me occasionally scream of my troubles of getting Amazon uh, JP to work to ship me fuck, um, to, uh, po- to send me a pochi dojins. <laughs> I keep trying. I'm working on it. Also, we'll write mm, Yeah, write to art books. Those are good. Mm. Um, so, like, I, like, if you like if you like video game isekai, because that's, that's that's what this is. It's a video game isekai, not you know a reincarnate isekai. Um, basically, um, MC takes a survey which has a bunch of loaded questions about you know do you like your mom? <laughs> and because of course it does. <laughs> yeah. And um, he gets selected to participate this, and it was actually kind of funny because like when it happens, it's first it's just him, and he's all like, oh. I'm sorry I had to leave you behind, Mom, but maybe when I come back, I'll be able to tell you. And then he gets here, and his mom shows up, and he's like, why? Why did you do this like, to me? Give me, me back oh, my God. feelings. <laughs> As I said, like, I, I, I buy the light novels, um, so I kind of know what's going to happen. And I said, there's going to be some action scenes, but uh, again, I think it's going to be focusing on the comedy, which there's a lot of. It makes me laugh. It makes it, it make, And it's going to give me warm, fluffy feelings, especially when you see Mamako's facial expressions. It's like, oh, God, this is a good mom. It's good. Apparently nice. other people do if they are willing to lay on the lap of a cardboard cutout in public and watch an episode. Yeah. Because that's why I'm, because I, like, I, I looked like, closer at the pictures. Like, you can see, um, at, like, on one of the pictures, you can see, like, the the backside of another one. It's like, no, he's totally watching the anime right now. I'm all like, it's like, you lucky son of a bitch. Neato burrito. That is a neato burrito. People should watch anime that way. So... Yeah, so it's not gonna like it's not gonna be anything like excessively lewd or or anything like that. It's just gonna you you know you're gonna get a lot of uh, Mamako uh, cleavage shots. You're gonna see Mamako in suggestive outfits, and you'll be all like, "Oh God!" You're gonna just gonna you're just gonna feel for this fucking kid of like, man, I am sorry. The big rip. The big rip. Actually, other anime I actually want to talk about is something I'm actually kind of really fucking excited about. What's up? Um, talk to me. So they finally came out with the set. They're they're finally airing the second season of Is It Wrong to Pick Up Girls in a Dungeon? Like, like, did you ever watch that? No, I never got around to it. So like, so how um you can't call um Is It Wrong to Pick Up Girls in a Dungeon a um isekai because as I said, there's no like world transfer or anything, but it's just a fantasy. It's a fantasy world that basically has game elements. In it. And it's just about this, you know, young, like, this young adventurer who gets an OP skill and starts using it to, you know, pursue his dream. It's very good. Well, let me see here. The first season came out, oh, God, how long ago was is it? Uh, Don much. As with everything, when fucking an anime has a long-ass fucking title, they come out with a goddamn uh, uh, short one, and the one for this one is Don Machi. <laughs> so, Don Machi, let's see. Here. Which also it has a gacha game. It does have a gacha game, which was heavily endorsed by um Crunchyroll, aka Shield Hard. It was super Shield Hard. Let's like, L- listen, listen we super- say that with all fairness. We are shills ourselves sometimes, occasionally. Um, so we understand a, a hustle when we see one, like um, what's her face selling her bathwater. <laughs> all right, so the original fucking um anime came out in 2015. Christ, that's forever ago. Yeah. That's like Um, some... What was the gap between... uh, Was it the first and second or the second and third season of Attack on Titan? That was a big gap. uh, I don't know. I don't feel like looking. But um, this this gives me hope. Uh, Yeah, um, this will um, give me hope for hecking um, No Game No Life Season 2. Because that came out in fucking 2014. And people are still screaming, um, where is my No Game No Life? Uh, season two. We are also uh, getting reports see. from the field that uh, apparently the Danmachi Gacha game is okay. It is. Okay. It has a fair. It is decent and it has a fair system, which is saying <laughs> something because I have heard some horror stories. Um, 
We used to have people ta- talk about how bad the Kingdom Hearts Gotcha game was. Right, my team is good. Uh, let's, let's uh, so another thing is, um, I haven't actually watched well, actually, this. What but I want to bring up? Mm-hmm. No, we'll go ahead. We'll go ahead, Lucky. I wonder um, if we're going to bring up. Speaking about uh, Crunchyroll shilling, um, real fucking hard. They are really fucking shilling Doctor Stone. Well, okay, that's a different like, show than I was going to talk about. All right. Yeah, yeah, that's why I wanted to. Get, I felt like that. Um, like it's so much that like I'm pretty sure they changed their Twitter, like handles reflect it. Like they're talking like constant like you know ads about it. So much that like when the episode comes on, there's like a scene where it just goes Crunchyroll in the front. So I'm like, I'm just like Crunchyroll. What's your game here? Like, did you like put money into this or what? I'm confused because it, it's not on the list of co-financed um productions. So I'm like, eh? I don't know, maybe. Well, that's that's always a weird discussion with like licensing and stuff. Is it so? It's like okay, so you had to pay money to get the show, uh, you know, licensed. But do they also give you money back to promo it? Like I don't know. Like did did Doctor Stone give you a discount to hardcore promote the show, or is it that Crunchyroll is still a small enough business where if somebody in the social media office really likes a show, they just get to yell about it a lot? I don't know. Sometimes I feel like I should do that on our studio account. Just be like, hey, yo, I really like this thing. Chuck it out. But then it'd be a lot of anime titty. I don't know how people would feel about that. Well, we've, we have already run into the issue where sometimes you don't switch Twitters. Yeah. And I've had to unretweet some things. Other- yeah. Just to be sometimes safe. Sometimes I catch myself. Sometimes I don't. Anyway, what were uh, you going to say? Oh, so I was going to say that I, I haven't watched it yet, but I'm only interested... Just because, as is usual, I've seen some screenshots and I'm like, hmm, hmm. Uh, but, uh, yeah, so, uh, well, first of all, the, the, the thing is, uh, that, like, I heard the description of Fire Force and I'm like, I actually heard the description, I'm like, that sounds kind of interesting. They're doing, like, uh, weird yeah, maybe just... magic firefight and stuff. Uh, but then also, uh, hold on, I think, did I copy this right? Yeah, copy this. Uh, also, I'm gonna drop this in. Uh, Patreon chat. I think I know what you're about the show. Well, we'll see. Um, So then I also, completely unrelated, saw this screenshot, and I'm like, I'm sorry, what? Where's this from? You should be surprised. Um, The person who made uh, Fire Force is also the same person who made Soul Eater. Yeah, I remember that. That that was said. So I'm like, hmm, hmm. Oh, well, I mean, I might try it out, you know. I've been kind of whiffly waffling on shows, but it's only got a couple episodes out, so maybe I will check it out, because I'm not watching anything. I'm not committed to watching anything other than Case Files this season. Anyway, so like, I've, I've heard actually... that it's, y- you know, so far that generally people aren't necessarily super, like, impressed in the first couple episodes, but I'll give it a try. Like, I'm not I'm not necessarily a deep watcher of everything. Yeah. You know? Hey, is the animation good? Are the characters good? Who knows? We'll see. Yeah, the animation is good. The story's all right. It gets a little weird, like, once you hit through a few arcs. And I, yeah, I don't know how many arcs they're going to cover in just an yeah. anime season. I don't know how how long it's booked for, so we'll see. Yeah. Wasn't that actually a but thing that like... the Soul Eater anime did? Was it, 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 it was only clocked in at like 50 episodes, so it like is nowhere near the conclusion of the manga? Yeah. Like, hey, I don't know, because I never really watched the Soul Eater anime. I, I never did, I, I never really did either. Though I believe it had a really good opening. Um, I was just like, yeah, whatever. I tried reading the manga, but then I fell out after a while. Yeah, no, like, um, yeah, no, Fire Force, um, it's, it's just got its typical shonen, uh, it's typical shonen fair. Um, and I, I like, I, I like it. The animation, like, the animation from the first two episodes is pretty damn good. Um, it's actually kind of hilarious. Um, one of the characters later, you see her in the OP, is she's the one who gets, like, the, um, cat ears and tails made out of fire. She actually has this, like, really weird, I don't know if it's actually, like, a curse, but, um, she has the uh, lucky pervert curse where just anything she does will just end up with like her clothes being torn off or falling off or like a guy being shoved into some extremities in a very sexual fashion. So a romantic comedy anime uh, character. Yeah. Of course. But yeah, no. That's that's uh, literally just, oh, so you're a character from uh, from harem genre. Yeah. Funny. Uh, yeah, but Maki from Fire Force is uh, just, um, mm. But yeah, no. Like I said, I saw the I saw this completely unrelated screenshot, and I'm like, I'm sorry, what's this from? Uh, see, monkey is great, Madam Madam Firefighter. I'm 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 burning up over here. Please put me out. 
Oh my. Um, fan muscle. It's because she's great because she's an ex soldier who's you know she works out but she still has big tits and she has the mind of a maiden so she loves you know lo- like like being talked about like love and stuff. Oh my god. All right, so I'll cue that one up in the future. Yeah, cue it up. It's good. Like, honestly, I like it. Like I was a little worried. When I saw I was gonna get an um, anime adaptation because I watch, as I said, I mean I read the an- I read the manga, but no, it seems like they're doing real good. Like especially with the like um like if you see the actually I wonder if Stu like who is doing Fire Force? What is the what is the company behind it? I need to check. Absolutely no idea. None at all. I was being uh oh wait no that's the being licensed by it might be in Patreon Funimation. chat being licensed by Funimation. Oh David. David Studio, same people who do uh, JoJo. That's pretty good. Let's see here. What else they got? Let's see if anything. Uh... Wow, they just got weird. But no. Nah. Like, honestly, like, yeah, their big thing is uh, JoJo. And. Yeah, so. I'm okay with it. Like, honestly. Just realized my shoulders hurt a little bit. I've got bad posture right now. Give me microphones. Alright. Um, so, actually, I'm reminded of because we skipped a week of another thing. I wanted to talk about that I think we could talk about together that was Netflix related. Um, and that is that Spider Man Enter the Spider Verse hit Netflix uh, oh, a couple weeks ago. That. Yeah, I watched that. I also watched that. I think I watched it because you were watching it and I stayed way, <laughs> up way too late watching it. But, um, <laughs> goddamn, that was really good. I know we're super oh. late to the party and it won lots of awards, but holy shit. Yeah. Like, honestly, it was just that, like, Great combination of action and comedy. And, oh my god, that animation style. Well, it hit style. what I've always thought is a, is the right zone for Spider-Man. Um, <laughs> and I, for reasons, I have a, a spiritual affinity with the Spider-Mans. Uh, <laughs> but even if that's more with Peter Parker as a character, as the way the way Miles Morales is presented in, in Enter the Spider-Verse, he, he fits into those shoes pretty well at the end, too. Um, but also, yeah, it's a, it's a really good... Uh, it's really well made. Like a lot of people are, were probably prior to this thinking that Sony Animation Studios weren't worth anything because they were like Emoji Movie before this. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, it's it's really good. It's really well animated. Like they, see, well, maybe not seamlessly, but they very very well blend together lots of animation styles. Because like um, Penny is drawn in kind of like a, a a cutesy anime style, or even even more like a manga style just in motion and then uh peter porker is like drawn like a classic like hanna barbera cartoon you know the thing that's played like to me about the reveals is when noir spider-man showed up they're like how is this how is this how is this jacket fun there's no wind it's like, and hey, like, in nick can't... cage's voice by the way in case you didn't <laughs> know it's nick cage as as noir spider-man uh he's like wherever i go the wind follows and the wind smells <laughs> like rain i'm like oh noir spider-man was so good and the fucking rubik's cube <laughs> oh, but yeah, so just the the comedy is great and also the action is really well animated. It gets really trippy at parts. It's really cool. Um I think my, I think I think one of my favorite moments actually is cuz they actually do a lot of um stylization. Like um at one point after Miles Moranis gets like after he gets bitten, his senses got sharper and then they start using text boxes. Right, he gets like to- he gets internal monologue boxes like he's fucking Deadpool and he's like why am I thinking so loud? What's going on? Um, cause it's, it's a, it's a very truly a comic book movie in that it like yeah. plays to so many comic book tropes and he just gets fucking yellow thought boxes that follow him around. He's like, what is happening? I think my favorite one is, um, when the security guard catches him and he's all like, it's like, Miles Morales. He's like, all right, play dumb. Who's Morales? Not that dumb. I'm just like, oh, I love that. That's so good. Also, I think you po- <laughs> somebody posted the gif of that's a copy. Which I have seen now. <laughs> Miles is embarrassing dad. But it it, it works out in the end. Oh, and it's, it's like, just oh it's God. it's so really well made. Um And it's so self aware. Did you like watch like everything like after the credits? Yeah, the credit sequence are really good and then the post credits. Uh, which I believe this was a big tie in that like is it twenty ninety nine? Yeah, Whatever the future Spider Man is was like that was a big deal in the actual Enter the Spider Verse comic yeah. series. So he gets a little cameo at the end where he's like, oh, and like, oh, we can control Dimension Jumping very, now. Yep. And he goes back to the very first Spider-Man and they reenact a fucking meme. It's the point scene. 
<laughs> from the Spider-Man. And there's actually, there's another shot in the end credits, which is just the Spider-Man sitting at a desk meme like over a thousand times. It's so, so good and so self-aware. Yeah. Um, also, um, there were multiple, uh, not only is he in it, and I think it's the last thing he did, but there's, there's multiple shout outs to the late great Stan Lee in there, mm. including that in that end sequence, um, he's actually voicing J. Jonah Jameson, uh, like he always wanted, apparently. Uh, Stan Lee always apparently wanted to, to be J. Jonah in something. <laughs> uh, so yeah, no, I'm just like, god damn, that's just, it was, it was very clearly made with love and made with passion. I think they talked about it, how, like, the sequence with, um, where they play What's Up Danger, where Miles falls, but then he rises, right? They, they flip the script, basically. Um, apparently the whole movie was built around that early storyboard of that sequence, which is really cool and really good. And it's just, it's just great. Like I said, the dialogue is great. The animation is really great. And it's, it also, like I said, it doesn't, it doesn't lose any of the funny. And they even have, include a couple of, uh, references to, uh, the Sam Raimi Spider-Man, which, like, say what you will about those. That's what, that's the Spider-Man I grew up on. Mm-hmm. Like, that was what was Spider-Man was when I was a kid. Um, cause there wasn't, I was, just after, like, I was too tiny and no memory to remember, like, 90s cartoons. Like, I barely remember, like, Batman the Animated Series and stuff, but I watched, like, Justice League and Static Shock and stuff, right? So, like, I think I missed that. I missed, like, 90s X-Men and 90s Spider-Man, but I caught X-Men Ev- Revolution. And I still have a huge crush on Rogue from X-Men Evolution, but that's an entirely different s- subject. <laughs> But, like, I, I love that they really encapsulated, like, a lot of what I felt was Spider-Man y and, like, did it so well. Uh, the fucking Peter B. Spar- uh, the Peter B. Parker and, and, like, Miles is like, but with great power, doesn't he's like, nope, don't you say it. Don't you do it. And then he's like, and then he's like, kid, what are you doing? And Miles is just sitting on the side of a building, which is another great thing. They play around a lot with, like, angles and, and, like, visuals and stuff. And he's just like, kid, what are you doing? He's like, I'm trying to guilt you. Is it working? And he's like, no, no, it's not working. No. No, fuck. You know, he's, he's, he didn't swear, but he's talking <laughs> into his armpit like, no, no, I won't. Ah, okay, fine, we'll do it. I'm just like, I love that moment where he's he's trying to be, you know, old and jaded, but he just can't do it. It's great. Oh, the thing that, the thing that actually shook me was that Doc um, Ock was actually... Yeah, you know, I didn't see that coming at all either. Because I, <laughs> yeah. I, like, I deliberately didn't spoil anything about this movie for myself because I'm like, uh, yeah. there's no way I'm seeing this in theaters right away. So, yeah. like, okay, I'll catch it later. And I'm like, oh... That was a really good. Also, I really love her design. Like a lot of people talked about, like um, her her tentacles are now based on soft robotics. They're mm-hmm. like rubbery and filled with pressurized air, which makes them even more octopus like. And I'm like, ooh, that's really good. Y'all are really good. Yeah, at no, this. like all of like how like um like all of the villain designs I thought were kind of made. The, the fucking like, droning Prowler. sound they did for Prowler was like that's a little, like I watched this movie in the middle of the night. That's a little freaky. That whole. Mm-hmm. That whole subplot, which once again, I won't spoil if people haven't haven't watched the movie yet. Like, do watch. That's it. actually pretty. That's actually pretty important. But right. like, there there's stuff well, actually, going on with Prowler. But like that whole that's a whole arc that's really good. Yeah. Um. But like a lot of the way the characters are handled are just oh, that's so so good. And the they also are more more true to form with with how comic book Kingpin is, where mm-hmm. he's just incredibly huge, the hugest. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I I literally don't understand how Kingpin is supposed to be that huge, but he is, and really fucking strong. Jesus Christ! Yeah, but uh, yeah, it's it's a it's a really well made movie in a lot of ways, and I love it a lot. I I I, I am now like occasionally it. listening to that to the their remix of What's Up Danger, just to myself. But yeah, no, um, it's it's great. Oh yeah, speaking of that, like honestly, like I was dying like <laughs> the um honestly just the kind the like the the dynamic comedy that they had between, like, all the characters, like, especially between Peter B. Parker and Miles, like, especially when we're escaping from the lab, where, like, Peter's like, yeah, and I steal a bagel on the way out. And they do! They steal a bagel, and someone actually... Oh, actually, you quoted this to me. Uh, was another great thing where where he's like, all right, step two, I'll find the head scientist, and then Miles is like, actually, the head... Because he's doing, basically, comic book panels of his plan, and Miles (laughs) breaks the fourth wall completely, and he's like, actually, the head scientist is a lady. We saw her on a video, and he's like, step three, I I re-examined my personal biases. (laughs) (laughs) Or, uh, like, he he tries to flirt with with Octavia, uh, uh, Olivia uh, Octavius, before he realizes who she is, and... And he starts piecing things together while he's in the chair, and he's like, hey, 
uh, your friends don't call you Doc Ock, do they? And she's like, oh, no, my friends call me Liv. My enemies call me Doc Ock. <laughs> oh, by the way, did you catch this later? Um, Aunt May calls her Liv. By yeah. the way, that's that's funny. Um, that's also like double funny because apparently in the comics, uh, there was a point where male Doc Ock and Aunt May almost got married. Yeah. So like there, and it's the the whole movie is full of these little references that you might catch. Uh, there yeah, was no, uh, one of my other favorite lines was like, uh, after, uh, uh Spider Gwen because there's a whole thing with why her hair is the way it is involve uh, Miles freaking out about his powers. It's just puberty. Why did I say that so loud? <laughs> um, but he he says later after she rescues them from the lab and it's like hey I like your haircut and she's like you're not allowed to like my haircut <laughs> oh it's just it's it's so much it perfectly hits on the it's it's exactly what you want out of a comic book type movie because it perfectly hits what a lot of these stories are about which is like there's lots of really good action lots of really smooth stuff lots of really trippy stuff in some of the later parts which is really cool They the animation the animators had some fun there's a lot oh, yeah. of perfectly paced character comedy, like just um, all the waiters are dressed like Spider-Man, and they're like, it can't, it can't be, be that, that easy, can it? it can't. Oh my, is that <laughs> easy? it can't be that easy. Yeah, exactly. Perfect timing on all those delivery, um, <laughs> and just so much stuff that they 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 work in visual gags, audio gags, all that kind of stuff together. But also, much like a good superhero film, it makes you feel things about your life. Like there's there's some emotionally defining moments in there. Like, what I don't even know if that's a would that technically be? I guess it'd be a spoiler because it's 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 set up like it's not gonna happen, so I won't spoil the thing. But like, there's a huge emotional moment like right off the bat in the first like twenty or thirty minutes, which really gets the plot going. Where you're like, holy shit, that happened. People feel things about this. Oh, the yeah. one of my favorite parts was the like, okay, one more time, one last time origin story and they just they treat the origin story as just a series of like flashbacks and stuff and they're like this is the best way to do this because everybody and their mom knows spider-man's fucking backstory at this point thanks sony and amazing spider-man for doing it again so soon like that's the thing i really loved about the and i haven't seen the new marvel live action spider-man yet fuck i still haven't seen endgame because that's not on streaming yet so that's that's my own problem but i'll get to there someday but um that's what I liked about um, Homecoming, which is just like, no, he's just been Spider-Man for a while. Actually, technically, when he's introduced in Civil War, it's just, oh, yeah, no, this kid's been Spider-Man for a while. And I'm like, thank God. Yeah, but he wasn't high-level Spider-Man. He was like, he was uh, he was Babu Spider-Man. He still had, like, before, like, um, Civil he was, War. He, he was, was wrestling with though. Bonesaw Spider-Man. Yeah. You know, kind of shit. But, like, at the same time, it's like, thank God, though, you're not going to make me go through the whole backstory again, because I know this already, like, twice over. Thanks, guys. But, yeah, no, that's... It's really good, and uh, I'm I'm excited to see what a if Sony Animation has any more like zingers of a movie, and uh, b if they're going to do a sequel because the movie was super popular, and I'm sure it made a shitload of money. I I no, they have to do a sequel because I'm not going to be happy unless they get Japanese Spider Man in there. Well, we'll Penny has it. some references to Spider Man, but in the actual comic, I believe Leo Pardon and Spy- Spider Man w- were actually in it. So I'd love to yeah. get cheesy Japanese Spider-Man in there. But yeah, also no. there are some other, there are some other multiple Spider-Mans which could be very interesting we could see. So yeah, I hope to I I'd, I'd hope to see some more some more sp- Spider-Mans. Um and they have a sequ- they have two sequel hooks cuz one there's like at the end there's a moment cuz there's a lot of all this dimensional nonsense going on. There's a moment where there's like a dimensional portal and you know one character's like, "Hey, you want to hang out?" And then like we said there's the stinger which is like an actual like Oh hey, this guy in the far future has figured out how to dimensionally jump, uh, voluntarily, not through weird science stuff, which like derezzes your fucking molecules, which is really creepy. Yeah. See, and here's the interesting thing about Enter the Spider Verse: Miles Morales does not have to be the perspective character every fucking time. True. Um, they did a really good job at making this Morales' origin story. Like he doesn't even get his okay for the last time moment until like way in the end, which was really cool yeah. that they did that. But like he. It's really about him coming into his own as a Spider-Man with the help of mm-hmm. all the other Spider-Mans. Mm-hmm. But you're right that like they could focus on all other kinds of Spider-Man because there's there's many many more alternate realities with Spider-Man out there because Spider-Man is a very long running character who's been through some canon canonicity ups and downs over the days. Like there's multiple Spider-Girls as in like 
Peter Parker's daughters in multiple timelines through different situations kind of stuff. Like, and other generational Spider-Man, which could be really interesting. There's stuff with, you know, Mary Jane actually doing her own thing. Like, there's, there are so many what-if scenarios that uh, they could do if they wanted to do more past, present, future. Also, I appreciated that they were, even though it was in, like, technically I think he said that he was from the 30s, that, like, that nor Spider-Man's thing was punching Nazis. Like, <laughs> that's hilarious. That is totally, that is in fact comics from that era. Maybe a little early, but who knows? Alternate alternate future history. So let's see. I think we talked about Enter the Spider-Verse for a good 20 minutes. Sounds about good right. Uh, so I'm thinking the only other really newsy type thing or thing I've been doing I want to talk about is, uh, I mentioned it earlier because I mentioned the thing, but uh, I finally got my Switch. Oh, so you did get it. Yes, I did. Uh, I was, I was a little concerned because first of all, goddamn taxes, stealing, siphoning away all my extra money. I shouldn't complain though. I've already talked about how my my sales tax tax rate in this state is better than in other places. Um, but still, I was like, uh, because I had to bundle some other stuff. Like I had to replace my mouse because it it didn't break. Like it still clicked on the left mouse button, but it it required you to push hard, and it really fucked up my workflow. And like it would. Considering how cheap the, that a, my, a mouse from Amazon Basics is, it was like, I have to buy this. And, like, I had to restock up on some other stuff, so it was, like, a pretty expensive purchase. But I got it, and I got Breath of the Wild to go with it. I haven't played it much. I'm still not off the plateau yet, because I've been sick, and I haven't had much time to play it. Um, like, honestly, here's the crazy thing. You can just have a fuck ton of fun just on the plateau. Yeah, I know. I learned lots of stuff. I spent a good... It's got to be at least ten minutes just throwing random shit in a cook fire. Because I'm like... <laughs> Well, you gave me, like, eight spicy peppers to go in the cold area. How many different cold-resistant things can I make? And, oh, this is good for stamina. This is good for stamina. If I put two stamina things together, are they really good for stamina? Turns out they were. Um, I'm I'm still having a little growing pains with getting used to the controls and stuff, but um, it's a really... I think it's a really well-balanced game, Breath of the Wild, except for the fact that the jump button is the top button. God damn it, Nintendo, what were you thinking? Who jumps <laughs> with the top button? I'll get used to it, but still, I'm like, what What the fuck is happening here? Um, but it's really well designed. I, um, I like I like the Switch a lot. I like the feel of it. Um, I think I read somewhere that it's about uh, five pounds, and I'm like, yeah, that feels like a good weight. Like, not too light, but uh, not too heavy either. Uh, so I, I really like it a lot. I'm I'm interested in future titles. And that's, that's a, there were two things that I talked to myself when I, when I, before I closed the purchase. Ooh, I'll have to look that up. I might want to switch those buttons. Somebody just said I can switch which button jumping is. I'm like, ooh, I might want to do that. But um, the first thought I had to myself was, I was like, okay, Omega, me, do you really want to buy the Switch? It's going to be quite a bit of money. And I'm like, no, that's a dumb question. Of course you do. You want to play Breath of the Wild. You want to play uh, Smash Brothers. You want to play Super Mario Odyssey. You might want to play Fire Emblem later. You want to play Bayonetta. Like, I'm like, no, you want to play these fucking Switch games, you giant nerd. Don't be an <laughs> idiot. Like, you know, spend the money. But also, a second thing was, I, I was like, because some people might be out there, Omega, if you were so, so concerned about how much money it is, why didn't you wait for uh, for Switch Lite? And the reason is, while yeah, I have cool. only played it handheld so far, I, I'm i not in quite in a situation where my life where I'm like, the only way I'll ever play this is handheld. Because, like, I have a TV, and I got it partially because I want to be able to undock it and, like, lie on my bed and not have to, like, tilt my neck at a weird angle to see the TV screen. Because uh, what I had been doing while I was sick was playing a lot of Okami again, and just like I said, lying back and tilting my head to watch the TV. Um, but my instinct then is always, if I'm uncomfortable, is just to sit up anyway, which doesn't work sometimes. Sometimes you're too tired to sit up. So the Switch is great for that. But also, like I said, I'm not out of my like I don't necessarily travel around out of my my room, aka my office, enough for me to fully go like. No, I only want it portable. Also, I haven't tested it yet, but it's got the the dock version has an HDMI in, so it'll hardware it'll work with my capture. I just need to make sure it works with the capture software I have. So theoretically, I could do Switch Let's Plays. Uh, I'm not in a rush to do that because I didn't start when I started with Breath of the Wild. But also, I don't know, like that might be good to stream sometime. Maybe I'm kind of talking about that with Lucky, like whether or not I want to just stream me dicking around. But I don't think that's necessarily good for like a controlled Let's Play because. There could be t- periods of time where I'm like, "All right, I'm gonna spend 30 minutes walking to a place." Uh, but the game is really cool. I'm a little, I'm a little frustrated with the only having uh, three hearts so far. I'm like, "Man, you're making me do a lot of shit." 
where having only three hearts will get my ass killed. But well, like once you start getting out and about, like, you start collecting hearts pretty heckin' quick. Yeah, I'm I'm hoping. It's just like the I like that it's got this extended tutorial type area because holy shit, like Breath of the like I think what was the last Zelda game I seriously played that wasn't like me booting up the fucking Super Nintendo I own. It was probably Twilight Princess. So, like, this is a bit of a departure. Also, there isn't already, a, like, a Twilight Princess HD, is there? I don't know. Uh, if there isn't, uh, Nintendo, please, on the is. Switch. I love Twilight Princess. I know they did a Wii, uh, Wind Waker remaster. Yeah, is that also is that also available on Switch? Because I'm thinking to myself, uh, like... No, I'm... no, 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 I think it's only on the Wii. Damn you, Nintendo. Fuck you. I know it was like, Wii it U, be... but I'm like, did they do the smart thing, and did they put all their shit that was on the Wii U on the Switch yet? Where it has yeah, infinitely it more digital, install base. I don't fucking know. And will actually get money from me, but no. I'm, that's sad. Because uh, Wind Waker was a game I really liked, but uh, I wasn't the kid with a GameCube when I played it, so that's... Unlike A Link to the Past, where I physically own it, and same with Twilight Princess, I own a Wii and played it on the Wii. Like, I can't go back in time and try it out, but okay. Yeah, so yeah, so, yeah um, Twilight Princess has been released on the uh, GameCube and Wii, but it doesn't look like it's been any... Please. Dear Nintendo, please, HD remaster on the Switch U. Would you kind of... Right now they're working right right now they're working on their fucking sequel, well Wild. And they're working on their remake of Link's Awakening. Which so... are both pretty cool. I think Link's Awakening is pretty good. Also, another thing to say about the Switch, ha- like I said, having only used it in handheld so far, I admit I am not the most graphic conscious person in the world, because I play consoles and stuff. Like I'm not uh oh, I'm not in my fucking four K one hundred and twenty <laughs> frames or whatever bullshit. PC Master Race. Uh, Zelda looks really good on just the Switch handheld screen. Like, it looks really good. I'm glad they got a lot of detail in there. Um, oh, yeah, it'll probably like look a... better on my TV, but I think it still looks I pretty good. Correctly, like, uh, don't quote me on this, but I think on the handheld, it like logs in at 720 at 30 frames, and basically on the dock, it can get up to like 60 uh 1080 maybe even like 4k i can't remember off the top of my right. head well that's so okay. the hand i have the, i have, the, the I have hand a 10 i have a uh, 1080 uh compliant tv so that's as high as i'll go so that's cool that it will still be a little bit crisper and smoother but yeah. it still looks pretty good in handheld i'm like ooh, maybe that's just because i play i'm used to playing phone games but it still it looks it looks pretty smooth so i'm like that's ooh. neat uh i can't buy any new games for it for a while because i'm a i'm a little tapped out into my my backup um I honestly i uh mega if you want a game that's probably gonna give you like a lot of replay value i'd say um like after you get done with, like breath of wild you should really get hyrule warriors i it's, might is that on, let me actually check if that's on my switch list because i have a list uh dear audience now that i have a switch you can recommend me cool switch games to check out but shit, let me go to my amazon my list and see what i've already put list. on it because there were a couple titles where i was like well, now that I'm making this jump, I've got to get there. Uh, switch list. So let's see. I've uh, put Astral Chain on there. That's oh, not out yet, but that looks pretty good. fun. Uh, Bayonetta 2, because that was one thing that was on the Wii U that they ported to the Switch, which is really great. Uh, thank God. Uh, Super Mario Maker 2 is on there. Uh, I figured I'd go for the Switch version of Octopath Traveler rather than the PC one, because that seems more natural to me. Uh... Super Mario Odyssey, obviously, because I actually really like those games, uh, the Super Mario 3D ones. And uh, I've got Super Smash Bros. Ultimate and Fire Emblem Three Houses, which I'm not 100% sold on, but the character designs are really good, and it's been a long time since I played a Fire Emblem, so I'll probably get it someday. So God, anybody's... Like, I, like, like, I don't want to, like, I don't want to, like, downplay Fire Emblem, because I do like Fire Emblem. I really do. I'm just, like, still severely burned from the last one. Which one? Where... Where's the last one for you? Um... The last one for me was, um... God, what was it called? Uh... It's the one that had Camilla in it. Fuck. Um... Was that Fate? Fate. Listen, there yeah, was a Fate. lot of there was a lot of Fire Emblems on the 3... The 3DS is a dead console to me. I completely skipped that one somehow. Not somehow. I didn't have the money to buy a 3DS, so... Um, like... Yeah, it's, um... Oh, it was Fate, because I have a fucking Camilla figurine that I want to buy safe. Because the thing that bugged me is... All right, it was in two games. I was like, okay, cool, whatever, fine. That might be fun. But it's like, all right, so you have to play one game and get that story. Then you have to play the other one and get that story. And then you have to buy the secret third one to get the like the true ending. Like, wait, I have to literally buy three games. Oh my god, that's the worst. Like, 
coming from a, I was a Game Boy kid. Okay, I'm used to the, we're used to this bullshit, right? Pokemon. Um, yeah. Oh, that reminds me, I need to put Sword and she- uh, Sword on my uh, list so I can get it later because that's another thing. That was another big thing. I was like, also, you're gonna buy the new Pokemon, nerd. Don't be dumb. You've nerd. you've missed like uh, two or three games at this point, and um, you're gonna buy it just so you can see all the sick new gym gym leader designs. They came out with another one. They uh, actually another couple, but they. Uh, in terms of the waifu one, they, uh, uh, yeah, it's, I'm assuming it's, it's Bia, like B, like B. Yeah. Um, wow. the fighting, who, um, is, uh, super fit, and, like, I'm like, mm, yes, instantly, fan art explosion. Boom. Welcome to the waifu singularity. Well, that was a, that was a really great, uh, it was, it was more about anime, I think, than other stuff, but I think it also applies, where just, like, seasonal waifu, and then, you know, uh, Dojin artists, and then it's like the the gun, which is lewds, and just like, yep, no, that, that's accurate. Uh, but yeah, so like, I don't know. Uh, that's that's a really shitty thing that Nintendo does sometimes. Like, I remember that with uh, Mega Man Battle Network, rest in peace franchise. Um, but uh, like was, like, I also, was, I think uh, the follow up on the DS uh, Star Force was really bad about that. I think there were three of those to start. Like the first one was was because uh, they were they were space they were like constellation themed. It was like Draco, Leo, and Cygnus was the third one. I think I'm like just ah. goddamn, just goddamn d- makers for Nintendo things. Stop this this uh, shenanigans, please. And apparently Fire Emblem did not quite grow out of that. So it's like because I want to play Three Houses because it looks it looks pretty damn good and people in our Discord are talking about it like at all time. Well, I think that at least with at least with three houses, all three houses are contained in the game. That's what I'm hoping. Like, see, that's why I got. I got to wait till it actually comes out and see what people say. Yeah, I will probably also do that just because I'm not like a super super deep Fire Emblem fan. Like, obviously, Fire Emblem is actually pretty important. They've got a pretty big gotcha game, despite the fact that literally everyone who plays it is always complaining about how much it kicks them in the dick. <laughs> um. Actually, it kicked them, uh, from what I heard, it kicked him in the dick less recently, but maybe there's still maybe. a lot of dick kicking. Uh, but like it's that's super popular and big. Um, uh, I was just looking at it in my list of uh, future Switch games to buy. So Three Houses is a bestseller. Like uh, it's, it's it, not- Amazon, it's like a top selling Amazon pick. So like it's it's a big deal if Amazon is like, yo, dude, people be buying this. So you know it's. It's a big deal. I'm just not that into it. Like, I first of all, I wasn't one of those like old school nerds who were like importing Fire Emblem before it actually came out in English. Like, there are some old school fans because the first Fire Emblem actually marketed in the U.S. was like the seventh. Uh, was the I think that the, the subtitle in Japan was Blazing Sword. It was just released as Fire Emblem here. Uh, that one I liked a lot. I was okay at it. Um, but I like the characters, and, uh, it, uh, gave me a deep-seated affection for Lindis, which, uh, is, I got a couple, uh, special Lins on Fire Emblem Heroes, which is all that matters to me, because gotchas are for waifus. But, like, I, I played the Wii one, Radiant Dawn, and I was like, that's okay, that's okay. But, like, like I said, I missed a lot of the 3DS market, because I didn't get one of those. But yeah, we'll, we'll see. The, like I said, the Switch is a lot of fun. I, I like the ergonomics a lot. Gonna, I'm, I don't know. I might dip into some cash and I might get Caligula effect for the Switch. Uh, ooh, would I want... That's a good question. Do I want a a long-term, like, JRPG? Because I was thinking about that with Octopath that, like, I I feel like that is kind of a light game. That's the kind of thing I would be like, I'm in the middle of a battle and I need to go pee. Let me just pop my Switch out of my fucking dock. Because <laughs> I would do that. I have done that, literally. Um, that's what's good about the Switch, but also at the same time, I can put it on my TV and get that 1080. Um, uh, yeah, like I said, the, the ergonomics um, are good. I'll probably eventually pick up a Pro Controller, what I had, like I said, because I had to, I had to buy some other stuff to replace some shit that's breaking down. I had to get another. So I haven't, I haven't really tried with the controller, the default little controller config it gives you. But, I don't know, I like the Switch a lot. I, I do not regret my purchase. So far. Um, I, I like that they're back to little carts. Little cards. Um. We're actually not even back to. Well, for if you count the Switch as a console, back to if you count it as a handheld, it's not because it's they're basically more robust versions of the DS carts. But uh, again, I'm 
again, I'm kind of shook that they can fit so much data onto this tiny little card. I'm like, yeah, I need. I have it in my my wish list. I need to get a little like I did for my all my D, my DS, not my 3DS, but my DS games are inside my DS carrying case inside the little slots and stuff. So like, I'm gonna need to buy a Switch case, which is just ha- holds all my games rather than hold the library of all the. They're not quite full size, but they're very big considering what they hold. Uh, game cases. No, I did not uh, lick the cartridge, uh, Panda. I thought about it when I opened it up, but I'm like, no, nah, let's not do anything dumb. <laughs> I, I already know they taste bad. We're we're about two e- Actually, fuck, how long has the Switch been out? Is it two years? Uh, yeah, like two... Um, actually, I think we... At this, no, maybe two. Yeah, it's been two. Okay, we're, we're about two years past that meme. No, I so I did not lick it before I slapped it in that card slot. Also, if I'm going to do downloadables, I guess I probably need to... Buy an ex- a second, me- an actual standalone memory card to do, do download stuff because it's that's a thing I know about from phones. But anyway, how long has the show been going? Uh, only an hour and a half. Once again, where's how? What happened to us being able to talk for like three hours? Well, I kind of like t- we kind of cut back on that because we ran into the problem that if we talk more than three hours, then um, Patreon's all like, uh, "Boys, what you doing? Stop, please." True. It, take- I, I mean, it takes want- well, it makes the episode take forever. And also, it's it's like, hey, whoa, it's too huge. It's the like, hugest. Because, like, I can, like, as with, um, Let's Talk FGO yesterday, I can fucking faff forever, if need be. Well, I think people like it. That episode's blowing up on comments right now, and, um, it's, hold on, let me check the YouTube stats. Uh, YouTube! Because YouTube averages out all that shit for us and lets us know all the analytics so we can feel bad or good about ourselves, as needed. Uh, thanks, internet validation. But, um, let's see. Let's, let's open that up. We don't have revenue yet, because that takes... That takes 48 hours, or uh, and also is only estimated, and we only actually finalize when the month ends. But uh, so let's see, the number of views is according to YouTube about 580, and it's uh, uh, that's over 800 uh, percent above average. The total watch time in minutes is uh, almost 18k minutes, uh, which is greater than 999 percent. Um, and, uh, average view duration is about 30 minutes, um, which is averaged, obviously, between people who click off immediately and people who watch all the way to the end, uh, which is about 250% times, uh, the average. So, yeah, it's doing really good. Got about 37 comments right now. Uh, most of which are people saying they like the thumbnail. Yeah. Yay! I'm gonna give graphic designer Lucky a high five. Go on. I was really hoping you would do that. Uh... But yeah, so people really like the thumbnail. It's super popular. A couple of people have uh, have made some um, unfortunate comments about the old couch thumbnail. Uh, you did not get likes on YouTube. I don't know what you were <laughs> thinking making those comments. Uh, kind of comments. Several people, though, are nostalgic about the couch already. We'll, we'll have to figure out a way to, to occasionally reintegrate the couch graphic every once in a while. Uh, well, like I guess I can talk a little bit about this. Like Originally, when I was making this design, what I wanted to do... In that bit of lower area was was actually have a couch and have avatars of us on that couch. And each week I would basically change up what the avatars were doing. That was the plan, but my tablet is still fucking shit right now. And I can't, I can draw with it, but it often leads to feelings of frustration and um, cases of floor lucky. Yeah, we're still, we are still refining things. So, Um. so I was like, all right, I can't. Um, necessarily, um, do it right now. So that's why, like, the image is as it is. Like, as I said, this first image was literally a prototype. I literally threw it out of Mega. It's like, hey, man, I know, like, you like your thing, but how about this thing? And you're like, I like this thing. I'm like, cool. No, this is good. This I like, thing. I like, I like what you did with the space. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, oh, okay, that works. Uh, like, my, pr- my primary concern with the thumbnail was not, oh shit, lucky stealing my job. It was like, okay, how, how technical is graphic designer Lucky gonna get with this? Because, the the reason why our thumbnails were in the previous style and still retain in the style for what's up. There's no fancy new graphic designer design for nope. what's up yet. Um, and I don't like I said I don't know that might be better suited for like the couch and avatars because that's kind of how it's already drawn. It's just ultra simplified and occasionally I add little funny details. Mm-hmm. Um, but the whole point is that I can get a thumbnail turned around in like less than half an hour, sometimes less than ten minutes. Like just it's real quick to turn around. It's there. It says some of the stuff we're looking for. Um, and we have to be aware that stuff has to look good at, at various different sizes. So, 
Um, like, I know some, at least one person said that they thought the fake Grand Order part is a little big. Uh, like, I'm looking at, like, the smallest, I think, version of our thumbnail in the, I talked about this before, inside our video list. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, because I think that is actually about how big it looks like on mobile. And I'm like, no, no, it, I think it needs to be that size because you can still understand that that's what that logo is and see Let's Talk at this tiny size, which is what you want in the thumbnail. Yeah. Um, and that's the reason why the composition of the servant arts is, is you know, so prominent, I think, is you were going for making it visible, and it stays that way. Yep. Um, and I, for this one, I did something really simple. I just stuck the anniversary banner in there, because I'm like, that's probably the most important eye-catching thing we want to tack in there. I thought about adding, like, a couple little mats and stuff uh, just below it, but I'm like, nah, I don't know yet. Well, we'll see what people think, because that might unbalance the composition a little bit. Yeah. So we're still so... going to keep experimenting and stuff. Yeah, because, you know, I might try putting some borders in there, some flowering stuff. Like, believe it or not, the typography, I have it actually set so I can actually move that up or down. So, like, on different episodes, different words will appear. And I have the, um, the servant ascensions on a separate layer. So I can literally just, like, toss those out and throw in new ones real quick. Because, like, as Omega said, he wants this, he wants this, these thumbnails to be, you know, a quick turnaround. So I was like, all right, I got to make sure that how I do this, make sure I don't have to build one from scratch either think of time. I can spend like, now that, now that I got my template down, I can spend maybe 20 minutes, grab three avatars, switch up the typography, um, clean it up a little bit and, you know, send it to Omega. He'll throw whatever he wants on top of that. And it's done. Boom. We upload now I'm it. Just a it goes in the video. Yep. So now it's just like, you know, I'm getting friends. Like I might put a border around the um, image itself. I might clean up the lines around the servant art so maybe it pops more. I might add more words to the typography. I actually, actually remove a couple. <laughs> so when I first... um, I don't mind telling this. Um, when I first um, shut it off, Omega was looking at it. It's so all like... It's like, uh, to ma maintain advertisers, um, you should probably get rid of the word fuck and remove the word uh, lowly. And I was all like... Mm, okay. Well, we decided uh, to censor. You asked. You came back and asked. Can do you think we can censor the fuck? And obviously, we have because the episode is still monetized, so it, it yeah. worked. But I was like, I believe YouTube has said you can do that in thumbs and titles. Yeah. Because here's the thing. Um, I knew this but, because uh, I'd done some research on this. Uh, YouTube, for purposes of advertisers, cares about tags, title, thumb. They don't give a fuck about the video description. Um, and they, uh, generally with swearing and stuff that like we talk about, they don't necessarily care past about the first. 30, 30 second mark or so, which is why I usually try to space out Wake the Fuck Up Senpai until after about 30 seconds have passed, but I'm not super fussed about it. Um, and then, depending on what actual topics you hit up, your video may get dinged. I don't, I don't know how good their algorithmic thing is yet on some of those, and like, uh, how good it is at analyzing our long ass shows, cause, I mean, the shows are like minimum an hour most of the time, and, We've talked about some stuff before, but uh, usually the episodes that, like, I think the most, like I said, I think the most recent limited, uh, let's see, so, well, first of all, we got a What's Up, which is number 44, Alternate History is Fun, is limited monetization. That's the soonest. Uh, you have to go back, like, a month worth of episodes to get a What's Up that's limited monetization. Uh, let's see. And that was us talking a lot about tabletop and game design stuff so we probably talked about a lot of war stuff um if i thought this video was going to get any new views anytime soon i'd probably like lodge a complaint with youtube and be like yo is it actually um also that was the episode where i used the trench armor guy who has a who has a uh, knife glove so maybe that set them off who knows but uh, other i'm not super fussed for a lot of our older content because it's like all right but who's gonna actually are we actually gonna make a lot of retroactive money and we might. Probably I've not. noticed that recently my L5R video, Let's Make a Character, has, like, exploded. I don't know what the total views is. Let me let me see if I can find it. But, like, I noticed that it it made a little bit of money, like, recently since we've turned on monetization. I'm like, what the fuck is happening? Huh. Like, when? This was published in November of last year, and can I get a, can I get a views list on this? So I don't know if people have just been searching for it. Yeah, so I think it was about a hundred views before and then recently like this this month uh it looks like it's picked up uh several of its views and like sometime late last month to actually now it's at like well 171 
Like, so it's it's picked up almost like 75 views uh, and made about 20 cents worth of ad rev just all of a sudden in the past, you know, 28 days or so. I'm like, huh, that's weird. That's weird, YouTube. Maybe. That's weird where people go back, but also cool. Oh, I've definitely talked to some of our um, Discord uh, members and like, yeah, we're we're listening to the whole Let's Talk FGO. And I, I think I mentioned this on, on Let's Talk FGO, you know, that has me on the um, ground twisting going, why? Uh, people apparently, apparently people love me ranting. It's like, no. Well, that's uh, why we tried to make Lucky Rant a thing, but I don't think it really worked out nah. as a format. Also, nah. I think both of those were only limited monetization. <laughs> <laughs> that's probably because they're so short and Lucky swears a lot in them. I swear a lot. Like, when I rant, uh, my filter um, goes to uh, its minimum settings. Yep. But, like, yeah, people... It's really interesting to see, like I said, like, I talked about this, I think it was... Was it actually on mic or it might have been off mic? But I talked about how, like, like two weeks ago... No, a week ago now, I think, I posted a couple Star Wars videos. They did okay. They made, like... One of them did, like, over 50 views. Actually, you know, like I said, made, like, a quarter worth of ad rev, which is decent for us a lot of our that's about where a lot of our our less focused episodes end up uh, and then i released one this week and it's got like 20 views and i'm like what what changed between this week and last week internet what changed it's so confusing to me sometimes i'm like why why did this do goo now why this no do goo later or like the thing i talked about with like why did this video suddenly shoot up like 50 views out of nowhere uh, once we can crack that we can start making youtube things i bet yeah, once we once we really get in there with our audience, we'll we'll figure that out. Uh, I do know that uh, people do seem to like uh, like Lucky Streams. Um, those do pretty decent in views and actually have. I think your latest one actually made like a nickel or so, uh, like a quarter or something. Crazy. Which, like, by I'm the way, this is important. Stream. I've mentioned this a couple other places, but like, just because we're getting we're quote unquote making ad rev, uh, we're not literally making this money right away. It's like they actually finish our total out at the end of the month and then add it to my AdSense account, which then, if it's over 100 total, we can actually pay it out, and then I'd split it up. But, like, which is good. That's a good supplement, if we could, like, make a payout a month. Uh, which we might, I don't know. Like I said, they haven't calculated the revenue at all for the latest episode of, of Let's Talk, which just came out, which I feel like is going to do good because it's longer, and we are getting a shitload of engagement on it. Um, yeah. But we'll see. We'll see what happens. Uh, we're We're new to this whole YouTube business model part, but, like, this does not necessarily mean that you guys should stop supporting us on Patreon. You should stop being interested in our merch, but that's okay. Nobody's interested in our merch, but um, uh, but like, just keep like, just now more than ever, just watching us is a totally valid way to support us, but it's not like a right away kind of instant gratification thing. Wow. We got 57 likes. Yeah, no, we, we average about 60 ish, I think for let's take FGO now, but, uh, we probably will still get a little more than that. Like I said, people really like this. the the new The new thumbnail and background and like calling that out to people really seems to have energized because I'm seeing a lot of people who infrequently comment or who've never commented before talking about it. Yeah. So like that's good. That's good. We made a change and people are reacting positively. That doesn't always happen. Yeah. So that's cool. Uh, but yeah. So let's see. How long did that faff about? Uh, we're at almost two hours. I'm. It's about eight thirty at night. Uh, I ordered pizza before recording with Lucky, so I'm very full. So I'm a little, I'm, I think I'm mostly over whatever was going on with me, but I still, I still feel a little low energy sometimes. So I don't know, Lucky, do you have anything else you wanted to talk about on WhatsApp? Ah, uh, let's see. Here. Let's see. Is there anything? I don't think I'm really reading anything. Like I want to think about all the things I wanted to talk about for two weeks now. But I think I've hit them all, because I want to talk about Spider-Man, talk about video game stuff, talk about anime stuff for once. For once. I know Axe really wants us to watch Simple Gear, but I'm like, eh, I don't know. Like, I just checked on on Crunchyroll, they actually have the whole thing, and I kind of want, like, I might be into it, I might not, like, I don't know. Hey, if you want to fire in, go for it. Oh, I no, might. now I'm just reminded of, of speaking about shows, because that reminded me that I think he phrased it as, I wish you still did Power Hour, which nobody does. Nobody still wishes we did Power <laughs> Hour. But, um, uh, that reminded me though, because you were talking about shows that came back for a long gap. I'm like, I'm like, what's what's the season two of something I want? I'm like, but Killing Bites though. Um, which yes, I don't know if I do them on this show or if I do like a separate thing. But if there was a second season of Killing Bites, I would go back to Power Hour style Killing Bites summaries because <laughs> that that show was so good for that. And just goddamn, and the screenshots like 
Oh, we talked about this a lot. Like, go back if you want to actually hear me talk about killing bites. Actually, go back and watch the old Power Hours if you can, if you can stand it. Uh, they probably weren't that bad. They were just. It was a really weird concept that I was trying to do. That wasn't as entertaining as I thought it would be. Um, what's up is much better. Which I should really say credit to Lucky because I think you you really not only the the general idea of the kind of the nameish thing, but also just the idea that like now we should just do a show about whatever and it's whatever. Yeah. Like that was really your focus on like ah fuck it we'll do it okay. It's been working ish. But um, it, just killing bites is so much just pro wrestling. But with more blood and tits, which is probably saying blood something at some points about uh, about uh, pro wrestling, because there's, I mean, I don't know, have you seen lady wrestlers? Anyway, yeah, yeah, yeah. um, but no, but just like it's so unabashedly like goofy and almost like exploitation, exploitative about stuff, and just like, no, you know what you're doing. You're doing. You're mixing dumb animal facts as read to me by. Archer's voice actor, um, with honey badger memes, which are ancient at this point, with just like I like I said, uh, TNA and fucking suplexes and shit. Like it's it's real dumb and like I don't know. I just I just loved it so much about what they were going for with like a lot of the stuff and just like uh, this is just good popcorn anime. I can just relax and watch this and take some primo screenshots and just it's funny every. It's entertaining every week. And I know there's more to the manga, so I really want there to be a second season sometime. I hope people actually like Killing Bites and understood that that's what Killing Bites was. Yeah, so looking through Switch games right now, thinking about actually, a game that I might pick up and stream here since it's still somewhat recent is I might pick up Bloodstained. Ooh, yeah, Bloodstained. Uh, was there a... And I think they fixed any goofiness that was on the Switch version. Yeah. I think, I think if I if I when well, I think I'm Bloodstained, I'm gonna pick it up for PS4, but that's just me and my love of Symphony of the Night. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I might do that because it's still somewhat recent. Because that's because th- I think that's the other thing that needs to do we need that needs to happen in order to you know get them viewers is we have to do things that are relevant. Yeah, relevancy is nat. a big deal. Like doing things yeah. when they come out and stuff. And we we've tried to do that some before, but we've also I think there's something to be said. Like in some cases, you can just do classic stuff. Like, oh, yeah. you can just start something, and it's just a good experience for your viewers. But oh, yeah, also, like, you know. Like, like, like uh, Stardew. I don't think I'm getting quite as much with Shovel Knight, not to mention that playing fucking Plague Knight is um, really making me mad. Is that is that why you haven't done a stream in a while? Well, yeah. I was, I was I wondering. It, I'm like, ah, oh, God, I don't want to deal with Plague Knight. I'm like... I'm I mean, like I'll, that is a genre of watching people stream and do Let's Plays and stuff. Uh, at the same time, that's not our brand. So if if you don't want to be uh, old man yells at game, uh, like as fifty percent controlling know, interest in this up... channel, you know you can fucking skip that shit. I might I might put it up to a vote. Let's see, I can check it's out like, streams. I I think I'll do that. I'll put it up to a vote. It's like, hey, I'm not having a great time with um, Shovel Knight specifically because I beat Specter Knight and the well, main. Well, you game. beat Core Shovel Knight, which is pretty good. Yeah, and I so beat Specter Knight, which I actually had a lot of fun with. Yeah, Play that night. was one stream. Uh, yeah. I mean, I will say, talking about tapering, um, the the uh, Plague Night episode does have, it's, it's not the shortest, but it does have the least amount of views and the least amount of likes out of all the four episodes you've done. So, like, I don't know. You so should, I, yeah, you should do a poll and ask people how they feel if they're actually going to come back. Yeah. Because, uh, like, if not, I'm that's, a, it is a I'll, bit of a downward trend, which is not necessarily true for all your stuff, because uh, you're, a lot of your uh, Stardew streams, for instance, are all at about the same level, and they kind of, like, peak and dip as time goes on in certain points. Yeah. And honestly, so, I think some some of the ones that did the least are because they're shortest, which is weird. But people who watch stream archives are like that sometimes. Yeah. I was like, I'm also, like, considering, you know, if I actually want to switch it over to, like, an actual, like, Let's Play format where I just play, talk, and record, or do I want to keep it live? Because I do get a, I do get a bit of an audience. There's like a core group of people who like to show up and you know talk with me, um, and I enjoy I enjoy having them. But at the same time, if I actually you know uh, recording like I did with um, um, Bioshock and for most of Dead Space, R.I.P. Dead I don't know. Space. Huh? I said yeah, R.I.P. Dead, Dead Space. Space. I can actually see if I can get my PS4 controller to work on the computer. 
I'll figure that out. Let me but, actually search um, your Dead Space videos. I think you got but, through, um, I want to say, 10 a day? I don't know, because the thing about the streams is the streams don't necessarily pop up quite like everything else does. No, they're different. Time. Like, we advertise them, and they are, like, that's the thing that YouTube does. For instance, if we're streaming live and somebody looks at our channel page, the, the current stream we're doing, like, pops to the front. Yeah. Um, I think I want to experiment with, like, YouTube posts. Uh, I want to see if people actually watch those and see them. And maybe Maybe I'll do, like, a little post after this episode comes out and be like, Hey, testing something. Do you guys actually, do you people out there who are subs actually see these and are you interested in engaging with them? We might actually throw these out some more as like stuff because that's, that's something we definitely could be better about. Like I've tried to stay consistent with, um, most of our video types with like, okay, video came out, uh, tweet about it. And then I retweet that for me. You know, um, we've got a special bot in our Discord channel that always announces when we do a new video that includes streams and stuff. But like, is there more we could do to reach people on platforms, right? Besides you guys yeah. hitting that bell. Um, I don't know. I've I've heard that uh, threatening physical violence helps it, so um, <laughs> uh, Lucky will uh, fucking suplex you, and then I will pile driver you at the same time if you don't hit that bell for notifications. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what happens. But I've heard that that's a thing that works. Uh, but yeah, so like, if, if people are out there and they uh, have like thoughts on how we can reach you, you know, let us know. What's what's the best way for you to be alerted that we're doing something like a stream? Uh, yeah, okay. Dead Space did pretty good. Um, some of your last couple are a little lower, but in general, they're like, they got like 50 plus views, got some comments, got some likes. And those are older too. Hey, by the way, Lucky Blade, 10, 10 episodes of Dead Space, were, which were all about an hour long, if you haven't seen that. Um, I'm trying to, I think I only personally watched through a few on my own time just because I didn't always have a lot of time to watch Lucky for an hour. Um, but I remember them being pretty good because uh, Lucky is great at yelling. <laughs> and uh, Dead Space makes him yell a lot. Old... Not just in terror, but also lots of fuck yous. Uh, Lucky's <laughs> very sassy with the necromorphs. <laughs> but yeah, we've uh, done a like, few Let's Play style like, things. Again, like, um, I, think, I guess I can faff about this for a little bit. Um, Dead Space is my kind of jam when it comes to horror games because like um, I like horror survival, and I like horror action games. I don't like what I like to call terror games. Terror games is what I classify, um, like, Outlast and, and, and um, Amnesia, you know, those kind of games where, where you're not giving a lot of agency in your options, and you're basically, your only recourse is to run away from the things that's, uh, fucking, you know, trying to scare you, chase you down. And for some odd reason, there's always something trying to fucking chase you down. So it's like, you might get a puzzle, but as soon as you're done with that puzzle, there's gonna be a big loop, like, literally waiting outside on, outside that door, playing on his phone while it waits for you to fucking get outside so he can chase you down for, like, 20 minutes. Like, I'm not about that life. I'm really not. Yeah, that's instead, a big story. Yeah, um, instead I enjoy games like, um, I honestly, Resident Evil 4 got me on this. Um, yeah, we're, in, where, we're gonna. That's the thing we want to do in the future. Is we want to we want to do uh, seven. Yeah, it's where it's things are scary. Things are are you know they're still jump scares, but you still have options available to fight it. But yeah, because it's it's me, an it's an it's very much a survival horror. Like you have to survive in this environment where scary shit happens to you. Not like mm -hmm. a. Oh, you have to run and hide. Ooh, spooky stories. We're going to make you feel psychological shit about yourself. No, fuck you. No, like, there, there's something to be said about those stories, but the story has to be something really, really good. Like, this is why, like, even though it's one of those games, I'm still interested in playing Soma. Because, yeah, that's like... Right. I, got, I, I got that on my, uh, my hard drive. Yeah, I did, and I forgot to pick it up. Go me. See, guys, I'm still interested in playing that, because even though it's, like, the same kind of thing, I hear there's, like, actual, like, you know... Um, having like, seen a little bit of gameplay, I still haven't gotten around to play it myself. Maybe, I don't know if I want to, if that would possibly ruin it for Lucky, but maybe I'll, maybe when it gets around to Halloween-ish, I'll stream some of it myself. Yeah. And hopefully have a better microphone for my PS4. Um, because, like, for me, like, something isn't scary if I can't pick up a gun, if I, my only recourse is to run away. No, for me, something is scary is when I shoot something and it does nothing. A.K.A. Alien Isolation, which is another game we need to play at some point yeah. on the channel. 
once again, preferably together, but that's just because I love that game a lot. I own it. I've played it. I can't play it for more than like 20 minutes at a time. Otherwise, I'll have a heart attack. It's just yeah. the tension in that game is really good. Uh, but yeah. goddamn. So it's, it's like, like you, it's a game where at least me personally, I need to be able to like put the controller down and be like, Ooh, I need, I need to take five minutes. But if I do that by myself, right? Like that's, that would be the end yeah, of a like, video like basically. A- yeah, but um, that's why um, that's like that's why I like Bloodborne. I just don't play it a lot because that's all. Like, yeah, check out this. I'm this big ass. I'm this badass motherfucker. Check out my big ass weapon. This thing just fucking switched. Good job, me. Uh, another game I know that we got, we have a lot of game plans for when we get together to do like duo stuff that'll actually be interesting. Yeah, but um, so it's like like one of them. Speaking like, about that that tone, one of them is Subnautica. I've been watching Subnautica videos again. Um, and I'm reminded of, of, we've talked about this before, like, does a Let's Play make you want to play a game? Watching other people play Subnautica makes you want to play Subnautica, because there's so much where I'm like, no, you fucking idiot. Why didn't you do blah blah blah? Why did you forget you have a knife? <laughs> like, that's me. I, I hate the fucking ocean. I hate being underwater. I hate that kind of stuff. I hate being underground, too. So Subnautica has both of those things. You can be underwater, underground. Um, but in that game, I would totally be the guy who's just, like, knife out all the time, like, no, get back, stab, stab, just, you know constantly stabbing things away from me like because you can like game design wise the game is meant to be done on limited weapons but you have a few tools but i see like markiplier a lot for instance doesn't do that in his big long video series he just is a big namby pamby baby about the ocean but that's whatever his marketing angle is not to shit talk markiplier who has like way more subs and views and money than us whatever um but that's his style is that exaggeration no omega style would just be like you know, a random shark jumps out of the sand to get me and be like, you know, a fast fast scroll over to my knife and just be like, no, get back, stab, stab. Just mm-hmm. constantly see me knifing at things because that would be my reaction would be, no, get away from me. I have I have a weapon away with ye. And I think that would be, that would be something we could pull off with, like, like I said, Lucky is my like Subnautica Sherpa to like mm-hmm. talk about stuff and then me in the ocean that I hate stabbing <laughs> stabbing things and, and running from things you're not allowed to stab. And yelling about how it's not fair that I can't stab these things. But I think that that shows that I'm kind of on that similar point to Lucky where I'm like, yeah, having no options isn't. And and hey, guess what? If there's only one option besides failure, that means you have no options. You can yep. you can fail and not progress or you can do the single thing. But like not having options to engage with these kinds of tense games or spooky games or even horror, you know, whatever, whatever kind of genre you want to apply because that's always the thing that's weird about like talking about movies right it's like Mm -hmm. what actually is a horror movie like are slashers really horror movies or are they just jump scary movies you know same thing applies to video games so there are definitely things where i'm like "Mm, yeah no i i want options to be there and i don't mind if it's like a skill-based thing and i can fuck up my choices or i can like do stuff but like no literally like the only thing, the only thing to do is to to do this and run away. I'm like, eh, that doesn't like. I'm sure that makes entertaining videos. Like I mentioned, Markiplier, you know, he's played Amnesia and all that kind of stuff. When when people like yell at shit, I'm sure that makes more entertaining videos. But me as a player, I'm like, I'm not about that life. No, nah. like I'm not. I'm not going to spend my money and just play a game and spend my time, which time is also money, kids. Um, and just go through all that and be like, yeah, no, this. This is a a a waste of my time and my economic resources to do something that's not really entertaining to me. I am not entertained by this. But yeah, so uh, we talked about Let's Play stuff. Yeah. So we haven't got the ground to playing mages recently for the fact that Omega has been the sick boy. Yeah. But hoping for that, hoping for that soon, because uh, we left off on a bit of a cliffhanger. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm uh, this opportunity has mean that I'm almost caught up. I only have one more to render before we're we're caught up. Cuz I posted 23 <laughs> recently and we're on technic- technically technically cuz I was I was not sick that time but I was low energy because I didn't eat 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 good dinner. So I was I called that one 23.5. So that one will be soon probably and hopefully we'll actually get to record uh, 24. Um <laughs> but yeah, so hopefully we can move on cuz you're right. I, there's a little bit of cliffhanger and there's some there's some stuff I gotta I gotta get in there, and I kind of gotta get myself in that mindset. Because the the one thing I have been doing while I've been sick is that when I don't have the energy to like do lots of other stuff, that tends to like especially physical energy, like when my body is tired, but now my brain, I tend to write a lot. Uh, and I I have been going whole hog on my L five R campaign notes, 
writing a lot of pages of stuff. Um, so yeah, that's that's being worked on because. Like, I think I said this on an actual episode we recorded. You guys kind of spooked me into it where you're, like, suddenly getting into designing characters and I'm like, wait, shit, I don't have notes yet for real <laughs> stuff. Let me get started. So I've been having some fun with that. And obviously, I'll probably... I still want to do that, like, intro-type adventure that I wrote myself because I want to actually make sure I've got a good grasp on the system and writing for it and making NPCs and stuff and I don't have to, like, adjust things later. Uh, otherwise, I'll probably... I'll probably take a lot of my Star Wars approach, my Star Wars experience into this and just be like, okay, here's my plot notes. Here, you're in a place. There's a thing going on that you care about. I've made some specific NPCs and challenges you can overcome. Okay, go nuts. And then like the, because the way the campaign is sketched out is it's kind of, it's, it's not quite episodic, but it's, it's very much more, a little bit more freeform than I think some other designs would be where like, there's you have a checklist of tasks and you can accomplish them in any order kind of thing so it's more open world feeling and hopefully it feels a bit anime-esque in that regard yeah because i'm i'm like my thing's anime-esque i am gonna go out of my way like i know l l5r is a little bit more samurai cinema than like anime but i'm a huge weeb so i'm gonna i'm gonna make it anime-esque where possible that's actually a thing i realized to myself i was looking at these lists of stuff that i i never really watched any sam samurai about it I'm you've like you've watched some samurai animus though, which are inspired yeah. by samurai cinema, at least. Yeah, yeah, you know, like, like we uh, we both watched *Angle Moi*, you know, which is uh, kind of I think on point for some stuff in L five R, dealing with a lot of that that shit. Like yeah. that one poor guy who gets blown up by a cannon while trying to do something honorable, and he's like, "Ooh, wow, war sucks." <laughs> um, but yeah, so I actually looked at my first couple of vignettes that I'm writing because they're. They're vaguely arranged into, like, themes and stuff. We'll get into that when I actually run the campaign or give an elevator pitch. But I realized, I'm like, man, I'm leaning very heavily into the supernatural with these first ones. Is this... But I'm like, but it's not purely a supernatural campaign either, because there's gonna be definitely some more purely mundane challenges. It's just, those weren't the ones I wrote first, which is kind of funny. Well, you are a supernatural boy, Omega. That's true. I like, I've, I mentioned earlier about how much I love urban fantasy, and that's why... I, Case Files is so 110% my thing. So, like... Yeah. And it's it's L5R's own fault. They they credit Inuyasha as, and Princess Mononoke as, as inspirations for this RPG. And I'm like, yes, I'm there. Hi. How did you know oh, what I actually, watched when I was 12 um, years old? Actually, something that I watched um, that actually might be some good inspiration for me later down the road. Because um, you mentioned Princess Mononoke. Um, have you ever seen the anime which is just titled Mononoke? No, I don't think so. Okay, so basically the premise of this it's um fuck who the fuck did it not not friends So it was done by Toei Animation it has a very very crazy kind of art style but it's about basically a medicine a medicine seller who goes around s- selling mononoke but the thing is is he can't slay them until he knows their truth, their shape, and their reason. So basically, every every um like little arc is basically this mini miniature detective story. As he figures tries as he figures out like why this Mononoke has appeared and why is it you know it's killing or haunting people. And honestly, actually, you might you might like it, like especially if you're like if you're trying to like maybe con- like want to combine like some super tra- some supernatural aspect with um. With um, you know, like um, like samurai maybe some detective, because like uh, there is one arc in particular where um, I said, I'm, I'm I'm just gonna spoil a little bit here, but um, a new subway opened up in Japan. Yet yeah, um, when and so everyone was settling its first ride, and then everyone so everyone got on it, but after they went through a tunnel, like everyone but like five people disappeared along with this medicine seller. And they had to figure out, like, why this happens. And it turns out that every single person there had witnessed a crime, but hadn't done anything to stop it. And you just figure out, like, each person, like, had a different perspective. Like, one, some per- one person saw it, another person, like, heard it, one other person, you know, uh, lied about it, another person was the cause about it, one person actually, you know, was actually the killer. So it's like mm, all yeah, these that's, different... That is really good. That's, um, I've been drawing on a lot of uh, inspiration of classic... Japanese folk tales and ghost stories and stuff. So you're gonna yeah, so, you're gonna yeah. see some of that in this campaign I'm writing. Yeah. So like, if you get a chance, like Omega, like go watch Mononoke. It might be a little hard because the 
art and animation style, it, like, it uses very sterilized characters, and it likes to throw in, like, 3D animation. And I can't remember, I don't know if it's a Kabuki or, um, or, um, fuck, I can't pronounce, I can't remember, um, Rakago style, but it's definitely a kind of a mimics and older style of Japanese, um, uh, storytelling. But I think, like, if you want to get some good L um, L five R like inspiration board you're trying to go, you should like give it a watch. It's really cool. Like all I right. binged it all in one night. All right, I'll check it out sometime. Uh, what platform is it on? Yeah. Um, you can watch it on. Let's see here. Uh, Crunchyroll. Let me see here. You don't have a Crunchyroll account, do you? I keep forgetting. Shit, check. You give you access. That might work. Well, if it doesn't require like premium, most stuff is is free. To well, no, watch. Sure, I, mean, I don't think I don't, I don't think it requires premium because it's something that came out like long after time ago. So I can just look it up. I don't. I'm not like I said. I'm talking about this before. I'm not super big about about high level of details. So like if it's if it's really old, like here it is. I can yeah, see let's it see in here. There. Like ratings, it got, it got like an eight point four on my anime list. A four point eight, eight point four out of ten on my anime list. Four point eight out of five on Crunchyroll. Eight point three out of ten on IMDb. I N B B. Yeah, yeah right, genres. I'll, uh, I'll bookmark this for later, and I'll. <laughs> yeah, I'll... genres: ghost story, mystery, psychological horror. Mm, yeah, ghost. Uh, I have done a lot of research into Japanese ghost stories for some some elements of this. So, uh, hey, get ready for some spookums. Spookums. But yeah, and uh, for the campaign, like I said, I want to I want to run the intro to make sure I have a grasp of the system and make sure everybody's into it and stuff and has a feel for it before I'm like, okay, we're now I've I've got fifty pages. Or a hundred pages of notes. Let's go, dudes. Because Dude. that I I have learned some lessons about game mastering, which is like start small, Perfect. branch out. Um, yeah, this is ideally, the campaign I'd want for thematic reasons. I'd want about four players, and I have maybe two right now. Because I know I think Marth will like the mechanics a lot better because he he actually played a little uh, fourth edition. I tried to run, and, and back then my group didn't really like it. And also, fourth edition L five R was after like fifteen years of meta plot and shit. It was hard to grasp. What should be happening um, since uh, Fantasy Flight Games took over and reset the timeline and stuff? Um, and is is being a little more slow rolling with some of the fiction, which I know some people are like, mm, give me fiction. But also I'm like, at the same time, God damn, this makes it a lot easier for me to write for it because I can like slow my roll on Metaplot shit. <laughs> um, so I'm really glad for that. Um, I know that he had some thoughts about the character de- generation, but I think he'll like the rules a lot better because it's a lot more like Star Wars or Genesis. If you hear my dice in the background, that's me fondling my L5R dice because they're very pretty. I like them a lot. <laughs> um, but like I said, that's that's two people tops, and ideally for thematic reasons, I'd want at least uh, four. There may or may not be a particular vignette about four MacGuffins, so it'd be real great if there were four people to each wield each MacGuffin. Just saying. Um, so we'll see about that if I can get some... Like I said, once we're actually in that pause I mentioned, that season break for Mages of where I'll actually rattle some cages in the Discord and be like, hey, community, do you want to jump in and play a game with us? And then maybe be recruited into an actual campaign? Which in, is in no way also an excuse to screen people before I let them in my my home games. <laughs> well, I'm sorry. I'm Listen, I've I've done a lot of this game. Uh, speaking about, you want know, to talk about 10 years. I've, that's about how long I've been doing this gaming thing. I've learned some experience there about how I do and do not want to handle shit. Though, uh, now that I think about it, that's... I was going to mention this earlier, but that's one of the things why I'm super excited about... Why I liked about Enter the Spider-Verse so much, where it's just... It was just a very casual superheroes are a thing universe. Um, and uh, we've talked about this before. That's kind of how... That's how uh, me and Lucky got together as, as, you know, friends. And, like, that was one of the first big campaigns I cut my teeth on was Wild Talents, which was a superhero RPG in a super setting that I wrote. So, like... Yeah. No, I have I have a lot of affection for like big superhero universes and super stuff. It's part of why I like Boku no Hero so much, but also just because Boku no Hero is really good. Uh, which really sadly good. that's not until the fall, but that's gonna be real good. They can take all the time they need. Yeah. If they only want if they only want to make one season a year, that's fine. I'll live. I hope. Oh yeah, hopefully I'll live. I can always go back and watch the uh, the old ones that I got on my machine. And hey, if I had unlimited money, I'd buy them on Blu-ray too. Then I can actually check out the dub because I think. So actually, actually, here's something that um, actually, I guess um, what's our time at? Because I, I like this is something optional. I can faff about here for a little bit. Uh, we're at about two fifteen. Okay. So like speaking of Boku no Hero Academia, so 
like I read my manga online. Like I'm not gonna lie, I usually use Kiss Manga because it's just quick. It's what I know. It's what I use. I got me a pretty good ad block, so uh, I didn't like. So I have it set so like just the like the actual um, what's the word um, malicious ads get screened through, you know, like pop ups and stuff like things that like appear on like the actual set. I'm like, yeah, no, whatever. I don't care. But um. Like, when I, like, use Kiss Manga, I use Kiss Manga because I want to be able to read things that aren't out in America yet. Which is a problem we have. I mentioned earlier this episode, I'm like, give me light novels that aren't licensed. Yeah. Because, like, um, ever since I, like, I, like, I started using Netflix and Crunchyroll and Amazon Primes, I don't, like, watch, like, pirated anime, like, nearly as much as I do. The only time I do is when it's something that I really, really, really want to watch. Like, I am so fucking glad that um, you, like, your mother and her two-hit multi-tongue attacks came to Crunchyroll. That means I didn't have to, like, worry about watching it on, like, a streaming site. For manga, I, didn't, I never really consider, you know, like, there would be, like, a, like, um, option in. But I recently just found out that Viz Media, um, they actually have a online subscription for their Shonen Jump series, which basically is, like, I think it is, uh, they said for, like, $1.99 a month, you basically can read, like, all of their, ba- uh, like, their Shonen Jump backlog. And here's the crazy thing. Like, I found this actually really interesting as their business model. Like, even without, I think even without the subscription, you can read, like, the latest three chapters for free. Like, um, actually, I mean, let me, let me pull it up here. Viz Media. Yeah, Viz Media. Uh, read. Yeah, so they have, like, oh, let me see. Yeah, because they have things like a digital vault, which you can read from, like, things, like, things that are in, like, the digital vault, you can, like, you have to, like, subscribe a dollar ninety nine. But, like, so, like, um, yeah, like, like, they have the last three chapters of, um, Boku no Hero Academia up for free. And it's a simultaneous release. So, like, when it comes out in Japan, there is someone who has translated and uploaded to Viz Media. And you realize, I was like, that's really hecking interesting. Because usually business models, they were like, all right, you can, like, maybe read the first three chapters for free. And then, um, you know, everything after that you have to pay for. I was like, no, like, no, we're going to give you the first, the latest ones for free. If you want to read the entire thing, you have to, like, Yeah, that's join. that's good for, like... Ooh, somebody caught something new, or like, oh, you've been a fan of this for a while. Here's how you can stay current. And probably, yeah. I presume they probably have like banner ads, like every website. But uh, if you yeah, miss, yeah, a, if have. you miss a week or something, then hey, give us some money. You can catch up. Yeah, but okay. they give you three weeks, so like, That's you can, like stay fair, fair, like pretty fair. And it's just like, I was like, huh. It's like, unfortunately, this is just Viz Media and Shonen Jump, so it's not gonna, it's not something that can replace all the fucking manga that I read. Uh, let me tell you, Lucky reads a lot of damn manga. But, it's definitely something that I need to start considering that if, out here in the West, we're starting to get more options to actually, you know, legally read things that are being, like, basically simultaneously translated and brought over. That's something I need to definitely consider, because, like, like, I love my anime and my manga. I like, I like, like, I love it so much that at first I, like, this is like we were having those things about, like, discussions, like, ten years ago. Like, ten years ago when I had no money and stuff, like, I didn't give two fucks about it, like, I was like, oh, I can't afford no, this. because like, you're support. fucking poor. You're fucking poor. Like, I can't it's, afford Like I said, this is why I've never been like, harsh on anybody. A, because I, first of all, lots of people don't actually understand the, the, uh, legal or, or uh, economic ramifications of piracy like that's one thing like people are pe- people have a lot of thoughts about it that aren't necessarily true but also dude i've been broke before heck you could argue i'm broke right now i'm not really i've got a little bit but it's like they i've definitely had more money than i do right at this moment in my life so like now i totally understand when you're like shit i can't pay for that yeah but you know you still want it but like now that i'm in a position that i can afford like an extra like buck 99 a month i can afford like the 7.99 for crunchy roll you know, the yearly subscription to Amazon Prime where, like, they get, like, fairly animes. Like, I don't pay for my Netflix subscription, but I'm, I'm using my friend's account. Well, yeah. You know a but, person who pays for it. Yeah. Like, I don't I don't pay my own Amazon Prime. I'm included with my family plan, but I also live with my family right now, so. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so it's like, it's those things of, yeah, like, 
I try to support where I can. You know, I try to buy like light novels. I try to buy Blu-rays. You know, I try to put as much back into the industry as I can. And this is just like another one of those ways that I might be able to do it. It's just like the, as I said. The problem I have right now is it's not everything that I read. So yeah, there, like, there's, there's, there's a problem I think with anime and manga is it's like it's not. There's no true Netflix yet option, right? Like nobody yeah. is, nobody has built the singular thing that includes everything yet because that was, yeah, that was Netflix was while well, it was experimental was like oh we're still just put whatever on here oh shit this is really huge now we're taking all our content and we're breaking it up to multiple streaming services right. Like, that's what's yeah. happening now is, like, everybody and their mother has their own streaming service. Um, which anime, I think, kind of got caught on the tail end because it's like, oh, some anime is on, uh, some anime is on uh, Crunchyroll. Some anime is on Funimation, but it's dubbed because they do it. And then some anime is on Amazon Prime. And then some anime is on Netflix two months later. It's still really good when it happens, but it hurts. It hurts us a lot. It, it hurts us a lot. So uh, it's like... But yeah, but between like Amazon, Netflix, and Crunchyroll, I can usually get like most of the anime that comes out. Most of it. I think like 75% of anime gets caught like through that. And so, you know, that's a fair price. And usually what like slips through the finger is usually something that like I like to finally forget about and I'll have to come back at a later date. Or might get put on one of these um, streaming services at a later time because they keep out there always like changing up what they have. So like if there became like People, I know people are all like, oh, manga decks, and like, I'm like, no. Like, 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 if something is, like, um, is, like, I need, like, a giant, like, area that gives back to the, like, you know, the licensing the, and the creators. So, like, for one, it lets you know that, yes, there is, like, people who want to read this stuff. And two, you know, pay people for their fucking damn work. Like, I know people can say, like, Oh, well, it's like, oh, yeah, the fans trailers, like, deserve to be playing, but, like, see, this is the thing about piracy again. It's like, fans, tra fan translators are literally, like, you know, they buy the book, or they buy this stuff, you know, they rip it apart, like, clean it up, scan it, put in there, translated, and, you know what, I thank you every day for your work, because, god damn it, you put a lot of work into that. It's just why I never get upset, like, about the, um, like, the amazing amount of ads they, like, throw up on there, you know, pay that. But at the same time, I'm like, I am, like, 110% sure that, like, any of that revenue that you get from everyone else reading um, that fan translation, it does not go back to the creator. Right. But, and, and, heck, like, sometimes it doesn't go back to the translators. Like, now, I know there are plenty of people who are in that game just for the pure passion of it, right? Like, yeah. A lot, that's a thing. A lot of these people don't do this out of, like... Like, this is different from, like, pirating a movie or pirating a video game. Like, th those people usually have an agenda. I think lots of anime and manga started like fan subs and stuff started because the market wasn't really revolutionized right like we didn't yeah. have that for a long time i remember when i was a kid you had well first of all i remember when fucking you could watch anime subs re-uploaded in like 120 or you know 240p on youtube in three parts Ooh. It had to be three Ooh. parts because you could only have a maximum size of 10 minutes per video i remember um, that shit but like that was that was the thing back in the day, right? Where, like, there wasn't this big distribution. You could watch shit um, dubbed on TV when it came out with a huge lag because it had to be good and be popular and be licensed, and then they had to record all the English audio. Or you could watch it fan-subbed where they were ripping it from TV in Japan because that's just where they would do it. And, you know, some of these people would work fucking fast. I remember the old... Uh, the classic stream of the old uh, the old days was uh, the Tibayo, DB. They were doing um, Naruto was what they got big on, but I think they also did some other big stuff. But that was like, you know, the next day they'd turn it around. They'd have the subs, just like the model that Crunchyroll has. Only mm -hmm. they were doing it entirely, you know, just for the heck of it because nobody else was. And now some people are kind of doing that, but they're kind of not. So it's like we're not in the Wild West anymore, but we're not quite in the, in a like civilized perfect distribution method where everything is perfectly affordable and sensible for everybody kind of thing. Yeah. So it's it's uh, still kind of a weird gray market thing, which is interesting to see sometimes. And it's like yeah. like you said, we I don't think either of us feel particularly harshly about either side of it. Like business stuff is business stuff, but also like hey, there's a market out there and people are hitting it that like yeah. Like we've talked about, there are light novels are 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 still pretty bad in some respects. Like there's a lot of big name stuff. Like 
I think a lot of Fate Light novels, for instance, aren't officially licensed and translated into English, despite the fact that, hey, there's a huge market out here for this. What was our last downloads at? Seven million? Six million? I don't know. Yeah. We're Listen, there's a market out here, guys. Please, type moon. Hi. Guys. Nasu! Nasu! Mr. Nasu, Mr. Takuchi. Delightworks, Anaplex, anybody? Uh, but, so, like, Hey-o! there, there's a lot of untapped markets which are not necessarily in the most accessible format, which is another big thing about piracy, is, like, I think another thing that's, that's why piracy happens is about accessibility. When you get your shit, like, your origin and your, your Uplay and stuff, like, Steam, Steam killed a lot of piracy for me, where it was just like, oh shit, I can just get computer games for, like, 99 cents on a sale? Why, why would I go through all yeah. the bullshit of, stealing something off Pirate Bay and, like, is this the right update and all that shit? Because, like, because piracy is not magic either. It's not necessarily easy, especially for games sometimes. Like I said, uh, you know, I've been poor before, but goddamn, when when stuff is affordable and accessible, that's great. That's perfect. Excellent. When shit is not accessible, then that's when people are like, okay, how do I get this without spending money? And Because that's the thing I talked about earlier with, like, how my money and my time is, like, how do I not waste economic time and money on a thing that I'm not sure I care about? Right, because it's not accessible. Uh, that's why I think like samples and demos are actually really important because I don't think it and refunds also in some cases, because I don't think it's like I don't think it's necessarily economically sound. Like you're incentivizing piracy if there's no try before you buy, right? Because yeah. how does somebody really know if they like something? Unless they get at least a small taste first, and then you're like, well shit, I do like this. I think that's part of why Let's Plays kind of blew up is because, like, oh shit, I get to see somebody hopefully be entertaining and also see what this game is like. Yep. I just made a loud thump with my phone. Did my bad. Okay. It's uh, it was on. I set it down hard on my desk, which is connected to my mic arm. But yeah. All right. Uh, I'm pretty dry throated, and we're at about two and a half hours. So that was a good. That was a good topic to bring up. I think uh, we did a good. What's up? Yeah. Somebody's like, is there going to be a what's up this week? And I'm like, if we don't die. And we didn't die. So we did it. We did good good show. Good things. Yeah, I'm make a straw poll here. Yeah, you do that. Ugh. Ooh. My, my jaw is actually getting here. tense. So you're going to run through that. I'm going to go ahead and do the outro, I guess, and we'll wrap the show and I'll post it. Do it. So, uh, hey. Hi. Hi there, Andrew. Uh, This is me. I'm Omega. And I'm telling you that if you like this video, give it a like. If you have any comments on any of the subjects we talked about before, leave them in the comment section down below. Uh, feel free to talk about how much of an asshole idiot you were ten years ago. Did you even exist ten years ago? I don't know. Some of the people in our community are tiny baby children. That's not an insult. That's just, you're so young, it confuses me sometimes. And it makes me feel really old. Um, so I can, I can make you guys feel young. You make me feel old. That's how this works. <laughs> uh... You can also join our Discord. That link is in the description. Uh, I guess that shout-out works because we got a, quite a few new Discord members who popped in. So that's cool lately. So check that out. Uh, if you're new here and haven't already, please subscribe to our channel to keep those numbers up. And uh, also, so you always catch the latest from us. You can check out what's up, hopefully, every week. Uh, and also, Let's Talk FGO, our other flagship show. Also every week, usually, unless there's nothing to talk about. And uh, there's lots of other stuff in between. Sometimes Lucky Streams. Sometimes I do other stuff. I like to do these video essays about stuff. If you like my conversation about Legend of the Five Rings, I do that a lot. Other stuff we do. And, uh, yeah. So, uh, if you're already subscribed, consider hitting that bell for notifications so you always know when we post a new video, because sometimes the exact time and date of those things can be chaotic. Which it will be for this, because this recording is two and a half hours and it's already quarter past nine at night, so... Heck, this this one will take a while to renderify. Uh, and, uh, like I said at the front of the show, consider supporting us on Patreon. For as little as a dollar a month, you can get access to all our shows in audio format, downloadable, for whatever your convenience is. Our entire back catalog, all our shows that have audio releases, even some stuff you'd think you wouldn't want to see in audio release, I do it, just so it's downloading and convenient for you. Um, I think Power Hours are actually one of those things that had an audio format, so, hey. Check it out. Uh, and you can back at other levels to get other stuff like access to topic polls, access to live streams, shout outs on the show, whatever. Uh, and also, since this was 49, next week will be What's Up number 50. That's a big deal. Uh, that episode will be uh, freely streamed to the public to listen into because we're cool like that. So, so uh, 
If you want to hear an episode live and be in the audience, uh, join our Discord and uh, come back next week and listen in. Thumbs up. All right. I am out of voice juice now. Lucky, what do you got? Lucky's typing. I'm out. <laughs>